It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. We have a great panel for you. I'm so excited. Ian Thompson from the Registers here. He's always a laugh. We've got Ben Parr. Uh, hasn't been here in a couple of years. He's a venture capitalist. Got a brand new podcast. And from all about Android, Wintu Dow is here. We're going to talk, of course, about the new Google Pixel 7 Pro, the first Google Pixel Watch. We'll talk about Stadia going bye-bye. Elon Musk, what's he going to do with Twitter if he actually catches the car? And Papa John's. It's not just bad pizza anymore. It's all coming up next on Twit. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twit. This Week in Tech. Episode 896. Recorded Sunday, October 9th, 2022. The Whole Internet Burrito. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Wealthfront. Visit Wealthfront.com slash twit to get started and get your free $50 bonus with an initial deposit of $500. That's Wealthfront.com slash twit. And by Worldwide Technology. With an innovative culture, thousands of IT engineers, application developers, unmatched labs, and integration centers for testing and deploying technology at scale, WWT helps customers bridge the gap between strategy and execution. To learn more about WWT, visit WWT.com slash twit. And by Eight Sleep. Good sleep is the ultimate game changer, and the pod is the ultimate sleep machine. Go to 8sleep.com slash twit to check out the pod and save $150 at checkout. 8 Sleep currently ships within the U.S., Canada, the U.K., and select countries in the EU and Australia. And by SecureWorks. Are you ready for inevitable cyber threats? SecureWorks detects evolving adversaries and defends against them with a combination of security analytics and threat intelligence directly from their own counter-threat unit. Visit SecureWorks.com slash twit to get a free trial of Tejas Extended Detection and Response, also known as XDR. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show where we talk about the latest tech news. Oh, I like this panel. We finally got around to getting uh, Win to Dow on the show. Of course, you see her every Tuesday on All About Android. She's a developer, works right now when she's working at Adobe. She's an Android guru. We thought, well, with the new announcements from Google, we probably should have somebody who knows what's going on. Welcome, Win. First time on Twit. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me, Leo. I'm very excited and very nervous, but yeah. honestly, really excited. Nervous? So, no. Yeah. That's silly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. amongst friends. I know. No I, I, it's already, nervous. I I will keep it down to a level. I did have like three cups of coffee this morning uh -oh. to make sure that I was awake for the show. So <laughs> this is going to be like when on like, like, like at an 11. Um, when to the coffee achiever has joined us and is ready to talk. <laughs> <laughs> that was my achievement this morning. Like, ding, like <laughs> 500 milligrams of caffeine achieved. Like, okay, cool, great. That's a good one. <laughs> so like, glad. There's a sign that me. just goes over your head with the achievement in real life. Exactly. Just like, ding. Oh, look who that is. <laughs> Haven't seen Ben Parr in a long time. Serial entrepreneur. His current uh, startup is Octane AI. He has a brand new podcast with a Hollywood star. It's called Business Envy. You're doing it with Greg Grunberg. Uh, it's so nice to see you, Ben. Uh, we used to have Ben all the time on when he was at Mashable. Uh, good friend and uh, wonderful to have you uh, join us. Thanks for his book, Captivology, also a oh, really yeah. big <laughs> book on uh, all about uh, the attention economy. Great to have you on. Thanks for having me back. Yay. Uh, it was, it's going to be fun. And somebody was saying, what is that bot behind you? Ah, uh, that is my company's mascot, Octi. Octi. Uh, the cute the cute little robot. Nice. Uh -huh. Hello, Octi. Hello. And he's uh, done the right thing, which is erase the whiteboard behind him so we don't know what Octane IA's long-term strategic goals are. But uh, <laughs> that's life, you know. I bet there was good stuff on there, right, before the show. Just the best. You know, I, was, <laughs> I should have written some more things next put time. Some, <laughs> put some secret messages in there just, you know, because then gives us something to 
to look at. Uh, and also a long time, always welcome guy. I was hoping maybe we'd get to see you in person this week. Ian Thompson is here from The Register. He is now U.S. editor at theregister.com, but always welcome uh, for his Britishisms, if nothing else. Well, sad I couldn't make it up, but uh, yeah, my legs are a bit buggered at the moment. So uh, the idea of two hours in the car to get up and back would be no, a, no, no, a, no. a bit rough. But honestly, at the same time, always a pleasure. Yeah, we, you know, uh, out of friendship, it's great to see you. But honestly, uh, we're very happy to do this via Zoom these days. It's you know, it's the I know, it's but I kind of miss the, I, I miss the studio vibe because you know when you're actually in person, I think it adds a bit more. But yeah, that's life. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So uh, when we'll talk about uh, the event this week, Thursday, Google announced their... This was kind of surprising. I had to kind of remember this is their first Android Wear watch. Uh, they've, you know, made Android Wear for years, but they finally made a watch to go with it. Uh, they also announced the Pixel 7, which is just kind of the logical successor to the Pixel 6. Uh, talked a little bit about, I was surprised actually, a little bit about the tablet, uh, which they say won't come out till next year, and showed a kind of cool little feature of the tablet, which is it will magnetically dock to what looks like a Nest speaker to turn it into a Nest Hub Max, kind of. Um, your thoughts, uh, a couple of people said that the Google event was was kind of somnambulistic. And it is, certainly is compared to. Ooh, good word. Yeah, do you like that? I made that up all by myself. Uh, compared to what Apple, what Apple's, you know, kind of hyper frenetic show off things are, or even Samsung's. Google seemed kind of, yeah, we got a phone. Here it is. What do you, you know? Even Rick Osterloh, it's hard for him to kind of get excited. It felt like. I don't know. Maybe it was a jet lag. You know, since it was in New York, New York, maybe when everyone just kind of jet lagged and still kind of feeling like they were on five a.m. Uh, California time. But yeah, I mean, I, I feel like Google events generally tend to have this kind of feeling where there's maybe just that engineering earnestness, uh, which may be kind of a bit somnambulistic. Is that what you said? Yes. Uh, sleepwalkers. Yes. Sleepwalkers. Um, I don't know. I, I generally feel like uh, the one thing I like is that they kind of just tell you about the product. And I don't, I, I think as I get older, I get a little bit less patient with like a lot of like pizzazz and show and marketing. And maybe that's also just because my day does as an engineer, I just like literally just tell me what the cool stuff is, tell me the specs and then let me kind of get back to my day job. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I actually was pretty excited. I, uh, while you were live streaming with uh, my co-host Ron Richards for the actual show, I did pre-order both the pixel seven <laughs> and the pixel watch. So and it worked. I, I, and so, so it worked. I mean, uh, and it's actually kind of interesting because I am not generally a wearable person. I do have a fitness tracker, I but I use a Whoop, so it's kind of a a very specific. What do you use? You know, per, uh, Whoop. Oh yeah, man, I'm Aunt not Floyd wearing it right using now. Of that. Yeah, yeah. This is oh, for Aunt, serious. You... See, serious athletes use the Whoop. <laughs> yeah, and it's all about data. There's no interface. There's no nothing. It's just this like heart tracker that does. And and their big thing is data, data science, and everything like that. So they're. Their entire and, and it also has a subscription, by the way. So, right. but this is like pretty serious, but it does a lot of things that Fitbit does, like the sleep recovery workouts and things like that. But I like it because, you know, it's focused. I've never, I used to use, I think like a couple of the Withings watches. I had Wear OS for a while, but I think it didn't quite match my style. And so I dropped it for a while when I found Whoop, which is kind of like, I'm a bit of a fitness nut and kind of like analytics nut. I've so seen kind your of, Instagram. I, I know very Lisa impressive. Is, Lisa and Ant are like two of my like most consistent cheerleaders on Instagram. So I love the Twit fam for that. But I, I kind of like that this is so focused. And what's really interesting to me is that I, I really like the Whoop so much that the fact that this device doesn't integrate with other things that normally I would drag a device on for not integrating with like Google Fit, um, kind of like other like popular fitness things. Oh, my gosh. Yep, there's me. There um, you oh are. Goodness. It's pretty my damn. God, I feel unfit. Right uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to the gym right after this. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Yeah, I know. Um. Yeah. So I I actually haven't been that 
you know, attracted or me feeling the need for a smartwatch, buddy. I think partly because I do all about Android. Yeah, I'm into rowing a lot right now. Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. But hey, there's Lisa. This is great. Um, Lisa liking me. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, yeah. I would like you, but it would look like I was macking on you. So I, I just pretend oh, well, that I don't actually see these. Well, but if it's I, you and Lisa, that's then right. It's, it's less weird. Yeah. And I, um, you know, I work out with uh, kettlebells every once in a while. My trainer makes me do it. The uh, we use the six pud kettlebell. It's very oh, puds. puds. They're all puds, and uh, that is uh, that. You know, uh, I I hurt just looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, if it makes you feel better, I've been sick, which maybe the listeners might hear. So I haven't actually worked out in about four or five days. Oh, thank God! Um, so oh, God. <laughs> you must feel like you're falling apart. I tell you. It, it it is i i'm so but you of, prefer the whoop because you're a serious i do see i'm because i'm mr extreme with my scuba diving and my k2 climbing i have the apple watch ultra uh you yeah, know this don't try to repair it <laughs> this, yeah. this band is, is designed to fit over my wetsuit which i will Whoa. never wear <laughs> <laughs> and, and when you set it up i even the first you it says now do you want us to tell you what depth and water temperature you're at and I said, oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely want to know that. Uh, it's, There's my smart watch. It's a regular watch. Although I do wear an aura ring, yeah, and I forgot to wear it just like you. Well, when well, we had dinner the other night, I asked you about your watch. Yeah. Because it was a real watch. And I thought, well, this is weird. <laughs> Why, why is he wearing a watch? <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm with Ben on this. I was back in the UK a couple of months ago. And my mum gave me my uh, grandfather's watch. I'm getting that Ooh. thing restored and strapping oh. it on because that's you know, neat. It's just like I don't like smart devices. I won't have them in the home. I don't like the you know the, the smart watch because I'm just a bit of a luddite that way. But yeah, an old fashioned watch. Yeah, I'm going for that. Well, and that's one thing that these are never going to be heirlooms. I mean, I'm never handing my... I did get... Okay, so when I got a new Apple Watch a couple of years ago, I gave it to my son, who promptly gave it to his girlfriend. It is not... It does not have the same cachet. It has resale value, you know? Yeah. If that's the thing with technology over time. It dies like know? a year later. It's like, well, that's old. You know? Well, yeah, but I mean, you remember the, the Apple, the gold... Apple Watch when it first came out that they stopped supporting oh, after yeah. a couple of years. Thousand you know, dollar edition. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's just like way to tell us you've got too much money. But I mean, at least Google is is getting this right with the new smartphone extension policy. But you know, oh. it's just but, yeah, that was this a big deal. And redundancy is ridiculous. Day before or a couple of days before the Google event, it came out that uh, oh, if you have a Pixel Four, you just got your last update. That yep. that three year old phone is out of date. It's done. Uh, thank Even goodness. though it still works perfectly. Perfectly. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, how frustrating is that? <laughs> this time they announced, what, five years when? Uh, yeah, yeah, five I think, years. Was it th okay. Yeah, three years for OS updates and then five years for, for security, security updates. Which is so, all that matters, really. A little better, but yeah. compared to like iOS, where I think I looked it up, I mean, I'm not an expert on the iOS phone, so you, you all can correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, even the iPhone 6 in like 2014 is still getting 12 updates. So yeah, and then of course, like Samsung is, you know, still eating. Well, I was eating their lunch is a little bit extreme, but at least Samsung kind of recently committed to four years OS and five years security. So Google just feels like they're just... Again, not keeping up. They're sleepwalking <laughs> through the whole thing. A little it's like bit, they don't, yeah. They, I saw a stat. They've since 2015. They've only sold something like 27 million Pixel phones, which sounds like a lot, you know. But it's it's a it's less than Apple sells or Samsung sells in a quarter. It's just it's it feels it's, it feels like the battle lines are already really drawn now in the mobile phone market. I remember like a decade ago, you know, covering like iPhone and Android launches. It was like blow for blow, right? You know, a battle yeah. to the death between uh, Apple and Google. And now it's kind of like, okay, we have a status quo. Apple is number one. And then different Android players combined are number two. And then can anyone even name a number three? Everyone has tried. Samsung. No one has done it. Well, Samsung, I consider part of the Android center, you know? Mm -hmm. and, well, but, but, like, but if you look like, at manufacturers and you look globally, if you look in the U.S., it's a little different. But if you look globally, Samsung's number one. Right, and then Apple with the iPhone, uh, probably some Chinese manufacturers uh, next. Google's way yeah. down the chart, but Google, to me, what they what they kind of were establishing by getting making a watch, 
uh, announcing kind of the more speaker stuff. They talked a lot about the Google Assistant, some voice recognition on your phone and so forth. Is uh, the ecosystem play? And that's what mm -hmm. I took away from this mm -hmm. is yeah. that it is now there are now three ecosystems. There's Samsung, there's Google and there's Apple. And Google wants to play in that game. I've got to say, I'd add, I'd, I'd add Amazon into that because, you know. But they I don't have a phone. The, they don't have a watch. They don't have a phone, they don't have a watch, but they do have the data. And I think uh, looking, looking, looking <laughs> Which at Which would you Amazon's, rather have? <laughs> yeah, but looking at Amazon's recent plays, yeah. They're, yeah. they're not going for the hardware side of it necessarily, uh, other than the home assistants. And but, the robot, the iRobot vacuum, uh, vacuum cleaner, God, which, which I think of, yeah. now they're saying is, uh, I suspect, maybe a little bit in jeopardy because of regulatory uh, issues. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, you're yeah. right. I, Amazon has the data, but uh, I mean... This is to but me. When it comes to day to day handsets, yes, you're right. But well, then, you know, then this it, is it, why I think Google has a hard time, because I think normal people, I don't know, I don't know any, but if I knew some normal people, <laughs> will you know they say, okay, I could get a Samsung, I could get an Apple, or I could get a Google. Almost, I would guess universally say, yeah, but the Google, they're going to spy on you. And I think no, Apple's I mean, that, really trying to create that environment where they go, hey, you want a privacy, you want security. <laughs> Don't go with those guys. Yeah, but Apple are being utter hypocrites about it's that. It's not necessarily they're like, true. Yeah, yeah, we're all about privacy. Should have a little asterisk there saying offer does not apply in China. Right. You know, I mean. Well, they or are, anywhere else. They're doing ads now. Uh, I mean, Apple has Apple's plenty of first party data. There's no lack of it. That they have done incredible branding around like yeah, it's you know, the privacy and the, the yeah and like opting out and those are good things but there is definitely still yeah they want to do more ads they're you know taking away uh market share specifically from meta that is the one who's really getting punched in the face because of it yeah meta does not have Doesn't an ecosystem it? play uh, for sure uh <laughs> well, oculus is was is been their go for it but right. we're not yet at the point and we never be may never be at the point where VR headsets or even AR headsets are anywhere close to mainstream to the phone. You know, Mark made that bet years ago that he could build a whole new hardware ecosystem and it hasn't panned out yet, but what other choice did he have? He saw what was going to happen with Apple years ahead, but there was almost nothing he could do. He didn't do a Facebook phone. Amazon tried and failed. He tried yeah. to do a Facebook phone. I was there. It was like an HTC phone. I was there for the launch event uh, and it flopped. And it's the same thing. Amazon tried a phone and it flopped. There's just a whole pile of flopped phones. I'm sure we could find like, there's got to be museums, just flop phones that fail. <laughs> Throw the Microsoft Kin in that uh, pile and uh, you'll... Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it, it, does it make, what, what I'm saying is it makes sense that there are right now three big ecos. So you, yes, there's a huge market for cheap Android handsets, but among the premium buyers and the premium phones, there's three ecosystems, Samsung, Google, and Apple. When do you think Google has a perception problem? I, I think they have, I think they're trying to figure out how to find a niche. So, so with Apple and with Samsung, right? They kind of have like the big three devices that we tend to think of. So Apple with its amazing kind of integrated ecosystem, you have a watch, you have a phone and you have a tablet, right? All kind of like super well integrated. And I think Samsung is kind of competing and is in more position to compete with Apple because of their market share, right? With a, a watch, a tablet and a successful phone. And I think I, I can't help it. Google must know that they, there's no way that they're going to ever catch up to Samsung. It just it does not make sense with Samsung mm -hmm. kind of already being ingrained as like the reason that Android is the number one like mobile operating system in the world and just their market share and just the fact that, you know, they got in there early with like kind of going through carriers. I just don't think there's any chance for Google to conceivably compete with them and, and to get to the level where Samsung and Apple is. But I think kind of going to what Ian said, I think maybe they need to shift their ecosystem a bit and kind of with the home and the Pixel tablet, and especially with the Pixel tablet, not necessarily being an iPad or an S8 tab kind of level where it, the foot where, you know, there's a lot of appeal to media productivity, you know, kind of high-end creators where it's more of a home device and maybe, and that's where kind of maybe the Venn diagram of ecosystems kind of starts to circle with Amazon is like maybe they're trying to make their ecosystem something a little bit unique because I, I just feel like they, they kind of were in this space and it's like, huh, yeah, the numbers aren't working out. So what can we leverage? What are our strengths that we can 
kind of make our ecosystem a thing and actually have it be successful. I don't know if it's a perception problem. I think it's like they're in a weird spot. Like, because Lord knows Google has been begging developers, third party developers to make amazing flagship, like uh, showcase large screen apps and we're not doing it. Like that's like a whole other rant aside about- <laughs> That was another pitch screens. when they're talking about the yeah. tablet is, oh, and we've been working for years to get developers to do tablets. And that's why yeah. Android tablets have never- succeeded they just yeah, don't have the apps yeah it's, it's a chicken and egg problem and like you know back when i think around honeycomb time when tablets first came yeah, around yeah. people were really excited mm -hmm. honeycomb and was a tablet I, it was i had some of them yeah, yeah. Oh, are I you still kidding i've got so many dead android and, uh, tablets around the yeah, house actually them, it's ridiculous. you know i've got two love, google glasses what was the seven inch <laughs> tablet that google did that was a the nexus, the nexus 7. seven that was yeah a, love yeah. that it was amazing tablet and actually in hindsight it wasn't much bigger than the modern smartphones but it was no it was good it was just right i liked it a lot um, it's a good kindle sized tablet yeah yeah where'd uh, they we, go I, wrong I, I this yeah, is I by the way <laughs> this is by the way the 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 epitaph that's going to be on google's tombstone where did they go wrong <laughs> <laughs> because and uh, not that google's close to death store facebook maybe but not google but they and that's only because they make so much money in search that they can, you know, fritter it Spot away. This money out. Yeah. yeah. There's a yeah. there's a branding thing because like in the end, the like quality between the phones, I don't think is all that different, right? Like you can get no. pretty much everything no, done. In fact, you, you could know? argue and the Pixel Six and Seven have the best cameras of any smartphone. It's a yeah. yeah I would, I, I'm at, it's a branding thing. Yeah. But, but that's what I'm saying. Understand. I think people, I think real people look at Google and say, no, they're an ad company. I don't trust them. Yeah, but Google really mi missed a trick on this one. Because you remember when the first Nexus phones came out? They were the stripped down Android operating loved system. Them. No no bloatware, awesome. nothing else. Yeah, but no geeks loved price. them. I don't know if real people loved them. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if you get a Samsung phone, it's got so much crapware on there. Oh, it's that horrible! You cannot remove, and people love it. That couldn't they could have made that a unique selling point for the for the Nexus and then the Pixel, but then they decided, right, let's jack up the Pixel price and put a skin on Android, and they haven't really decided what they wanted to do with it. It was just like be like Apple, just be like Apple, and get people to pay a lot of money. Well, to some degree, and that's Samsung, not going to work. Samsung's the anti-Apple. I think a lot of Samsung owners are actually buying it because it thumbs its nose at Apple. It's certainly, that's their ad campaigns, right? Even today, they still do ad campaigns mocking, you know, that, that I've been seeing this ad where the woman's on the bus with in love with her iPhone, and then the, she sees the flip phone, and then everything, and she has to have it. Uh, yeah, and then she sees it in a year and sees the screen. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> but but seriously, that's that's how Samsung, I think, sees itself, and I think probably that's market research says at least in the U.S. the people who buy Samsung are buying it because they don't want an Apple phone; they want something of perceived similar quality and value. And yeah, uh, you and I notice that there's two different f messaging apps with the same name. That there's two different. Everything apps, browsers, everything. Uh, but we notice it, but I don't think normal, I think normal people uh, love their Samsungs. Everybody, every time I meet somebody who has a Samsung, they love their Samsungs. I have to admit, I've actually been using a Z Fold 4. See? I actually, I, see? <laughs> okay, see? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. okay so okay. I actually, so so I've actually had a very long, and I think a lot of Android data developers have a long love, well, not even love, hate relationship with Samsung. And yeah. a lot of that has to do with, with Samsung and their custom flavor of Android and it not kind of conforming to stock Android. So I think, so my view is incredibly skewed by being an Android dev because deving for quote, just stock Android is the easiest and most straightforward thing. Samsung ruins our day half the time with kind of these weird <laughs> bugs. And then, so around <laughs> June or July, I dropped my Pixel 6, Pixel 6 Pro on my sister's ceramic floor and it cracked. So Ouch. I had a Pixel, yeah, it, it was not, it was that sound, you know, when you, it drops and you yeah, just you hear know. it. And you're just you like, oh, you're just, no. Fatal, just, just like, like, oh, this like, is going to be expensive. Oh. Yeah. And then you look and like, mm -hmm. okay. So I actually had a Fold, uh, Fold Z, sorry, Z Fold 3 that I got from like a Google thing. And I was like, well, crap, I don't have any other option. I started using it and, and specifically with a foldable. And I, I kind of had to deal with it because you ought to get something, something about the Google Care or something with Pixel 6. But I kind of get it now. Um, I do. And it, it, 
uh, a friend of mine who works at Tonal, uh, Gabriel Peel, what once told me like, look, if you kind of get past the bloatware, if you start really put the effort into setting up a yeah. Samsung, yeah. you'll mm-hmm. love it. And I think uh, Michelle uh-huh. Rahman, who, you know, is also a co-host on uh, All About Android, yep. has said that, you know, Samsung is great for power users. So once once you get to that initial setup period, there's a lot that a power user can do with Samsung, and I totally get it. I, I kind of feel like I'm betraying my Android native brethren a little bit, <laughs> but... I can see why people end up liking these phones. And certainly in terms of the hardware, especially this foldable device, I get it. Um, so, yeah. So you're saying I mean, if somebody knows about Samsung good luck, they're going to be a Samsung <laughs> user forever, right? I, I I don't I don't know. Like, I, I kind of I know I'm, I'm with you. I think if you're sophisticated enough to have learned how to I mean, good luck is a perfect example of an app that. I don't even Samsung doesn't even mention it, but it's in their store, mm-hmm. and the, and uh, you know about it. Aficionados go, oh yeah, once you get that, and Bixby ain't so bad. Look, I'm able to use it, and it does great things. Once you get to that point, you've Did invested. You just say Bixby ain't so bad. These, I, I heard that too. These are that's what that's true. but that's what people are saying. Oh, but you don't understand. Bixby is how I interact with the phone, and it works really well. And I do think that this is that Samsung aficionado speaking. People buy into it. And then it's they the get IKEA seduced. effect, yeah. right? People look. IKEA furniture is a miserable experience, but if you build it, you will love it because you put so much of your heart into it that it's, and it ends up blasting once you do it. Same thing once you've set the thing up with an and with yep. a Samsung and you've got the investment, right? It is. You're right. It is for power users, and power users do love Maybe the that's thing. That's why and they it, love it. Yeah. Yeah, it has a place that yeah. uh, Google has not been able to find that niche, which I feel like is the conclusion that we've all come to. And I hope they figure out a specific niche. It's not like that they don't have their fans, though, and that they're not people are not buying it. But I well, just can't see a big move in market it's share. It's a small group. That's the problem they have. Uh, it's 27 million phones in eight years is not not moving the needle. I'll see. I've been a Pixel user for a while simply because I want the security updates first. That's the most important thing for me, yeah. but I mean, no, you know, I, that's it, me too. And in fact, I gave my Samsung away. Uh, I had a flip, which I really liked. At least I liked the form factor. I gave it to Stacy Higginbotham. I gave my daughter my S22 Ultra, um, but because I like the pure Android experience. But we live in a bubble. It's very clear we're in a bubble. Yeah, this is it. We think everybody, oh, everybody loves the Pixel Six. Nobody even knows it exists. We do. <laughs> You know, everybody I know has a Pixel Six. It's got a great camera and a great camera and photo software. But it all, albeit, I am a Pixel Five because I want the three fifty mil, three point five mil jack. So, well, but it, but and it's you know got it's pure Android. It's got all the updates. Uh, I, I guess again, the question I'm asking is: can, Google's trying to make an ecosystem play. Do they have a chance in hell against Samsung and Apple? Ben is honestly it, no. Yeah, where would you? <laughs> where, no. No, I, I, I mean, look, this is like, uh, like I, I have, this is the ultimate ecosystem. He's a- holding Apple up an is, iPhone 14 Pro Max. I know, Pro I had Max, to. Baby. Yep. They, they, <sighs> built, they built an ecosystem where people want to go and build the things there first. And then Samsung built an ecosystem where everyone like builds everything else. It's just, you can only build for one or two things. And if you hit those two, you hit almost everybody. And you can just do most of the work for Samsung and then, you know, a little bit of additional work and it goes over to uh, Google, because it is, they're both, I mean, honestly, this is union's territory, but yeah, you, you go, you think Apple first, Android second, when it comes to, uh, releasing apps in general, at least in the U S depends on the country. Of I, course. You know, I am stuck. I have, of course, all this different phones and I can live in all the ecosystems, but honestly, uh, as much as I hate it and it makes me mad, the Apple ecosystem rules. I hate to admit, I hate it, but the way they've set it up with continuity, with the Mac, with the iPad, with the AirPods, with the phone, with the watch, uh, you kind of want the complete set. AirDrop and iMessage yeah. are magical things. They yeah. just are. And the people, the one person in my family, my daughter, who has an Android phone, and by the way, hates Apple, which is this, again, same thing. It's kind of the anti-Apple. Um same thing with Mary Jo Foley on our Windows Weekly show. Hates Apple. Has a Pixel 6. Um, they, they honestly, I think Apple just 
sucks you in and you, you it's hard to get out that's the pro, that's the point of an ecosystem play right lock in mm -hmm. right yeah. and Absolutely. once you make a choice i wish i mean the ideal world would be everything be open and interrupt operate and you could choose the best watch you could choose the best earbuds you could choose the best phone the best laptop best and it would all work together but it doesn't it doesn't work that way and what happens with Apple, you get, you you know, and I think the phone is probably the uh, gateway drug. You get the phone, then you kind of want the watch, then you kind of want the AirPods, and you kind of, it just, and then you're stuck. You cannot go. You cannot leave. Am I right? We're also, we're no, also at right. the point, I mean, yeah. uh, uh, that we're at the point where, you know, parents are like indoctrinating their kids oh, into an ecosystem. Yeah. There, <laughs> there was a Hacker News story today about a guy who had uh, bought a, a, an iPhone for his kid in the school, said you may not bring, uh, the kid was, I don't know, fifth grade, sixth grade. You may not, by the way, most fifth graders and sixth graders in affluent areas anyway have phones now because it's, the, it's how you keep track of your kid, right? It's how you, how you, you know, they can call for a ride or you know where they are. And, and uh, the school said, no, you can't. I must have been some hippie school. No, you can't have an iPhone. And they gave each kid an, an air tag. And said, here, <laughs> your parents can keep track of you with this. And I, yeah. <laughs> and I just had That's, to I, uh, shake my head, I guess. There was an article in the New York Times recently about how parents are putting Apple Watches on their kids so yes. that they can track and do simple phone calling because you can get very cheap plans that way. And, and incidentally, Apple has a mode where you set up your phone for your kid he doesn't have to have a phone. She has an i, an Apple Watch, and mom has the iPhone. Uh, Apple knows that. Didn't? <laughs> it wasn't there a memo? This is uh, I, this is a discovery, and we're going to talk about discovery and the problems with court cases and discovery in a bit. But discovery can be a nightmare for these companies. And the Epic Apple event, uh, just court action, which Apple won hands down, but they lost in discovery because the email came out. I think it was from Craig, Craig Federighi or Eddie Q saying. We can't put messages on Android because then parents would buy and cheap Android phones for their kids. The Apple knows this, a hundred percent. Oh yeah, but I, go ahead. I mean, there are always going to be parents that that do this because it, it gives them reassurance. I mean, back in my day, my mum gave me a watch and said, "If you're not back by five p.m., I'm caught. I'm going out looking for there you. you and you'll, it will be bad <laughs> for you." Yeah. But you know, that was the that, '80s version not, of an iPhone. I've, I was going to say, this is not the world we're living in right now. And I can kind of understand, I can understand Apple's point because obviously they want to shift hardware. But I mean, these kind of child tracking things are incredibly popular. They're also, as I've learned after looking into it, incredibly insecure. I mean, if you're buying a, a, you know, a kid tracker with Android, you know, you are trusting that a third party manufacturer has not just copied a software stack and isn't updating it and you could just be leaving this wide open so you know there are real problems with these kind of things in terms of you might think you're making your kids safer but maybe you're not right uh, i was at i was in a very fancy tiburon you probably know it ian uh huh. is yeah a, is hippies a, with money a very very wealthy enclave in marin county lisa and i uh were there for uh, lunch and we and there was a candy store and lisa has to go to every candy store. It's, some people's shoe stores, jewelry stores, she's got to go to the candy store. So we go in, there's a gaggle of kids, all of them. I mean, and these are little kids, maybe eight to 12, maybe a little older than eight, 10 to 12, 13. They're all paying with their iPhones. None of them have cash. And and uh, there's some sort of parental control because the kid said, well, I only have $3 I can spend. They all were paying with tap to pay. Now it's an affluent community, but I have that's to think that's kind common. Of, yeah, I think it's a trend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the wallet may barely be a thing in yeah. a decade or two. They're going to be like, "Why do I have to have a physical version of my driver's license or my ID?" It makes no sense. And you know what? Probably a little bit down the line, maybe it doesn't make sense. The the Pixel Watch looks very pretty. Uh, when do you think it's? Uh, I mean, this is again. I can't hardly believe it. Google's made Wear OS for years. They've let Motorola and Fossil and everybody else make, and Samsung now, make Android Wear watches. They're finally making one of their own. Is it because they bought Fitbit? 
I think like, uh, I think it is part of the ecosystem play. And I think, yeah. you know, yeah, they have Fitbit. You, you kind of have every they piece. They want to do something. Yeah, yeah. You have to have every piece just to kind of be it's like yeah. table stakes in the game. And I, I, I don't know, like, I feel like Wear OS has kind of been like, again, not, not dissimilar from tablets, but I think a little more successful than large screen story has been like kind of a weird space for Android and Google as a company. Well, and even so I think you, you're an Android it. developer and you're wearing a hoop. I just don't need a smartwatch. <laughs> um, well, I just don't need a smartwatch. Um, yeah, and it's actually, what may blow your mind is that actually quite a few of uh, my Android friends have switched to the iOS ecosystem in recent years oh. because of the wonderful World, World, World Garden. Yes, um, there are lots of Android developers. They want to be a blue bubble, green bubbles, right? They want. Yeah, be, they yeah, do. You know, yeah. they, they don't want to be part of that Drake song or whatever. Um, <laughs> they want to get bullied. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, it's really interesting because I think that... Um, Google, in a sense, like especially as an Android developer, a lot of times it, we take a lot of cues from Google first party apps for better or for worse. And I think that, you know, for something like where we kind of and, and for large screens, it's kind of hard to convince us to put time and effort into it. Like, so like, like having a where app, having a, even a large screen version of an app takes additional design and development time. And so we often look to Google as like this kind of North Star like, hey, look, look, y'all, we're really, really serious this time. Like, like we promise you this time we're super serious about Wear OS and we're super serious about large screens. And so not saying that they're doing this for developers because I don't think so, but I think that they need to put, you know, their toe in the water to make you kind know, of Wear OS successful to kind of showcase maybe what it's about and what what they can do. And I don't know why that's important. Like, I, I, I keep thinking about this a lot, especially with questions about, you know, even like the Pixel phone, like, you know, we're talking about whether they're ever where they're ever going to catch up and and beat um, Samsung or Apple. No, and it, to me, like the, 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 and it's weird because I think the Pixel phone itself, even itself has kind of a muddled identity. Right. Yeah. Because. Yeah. What it, is Tensor? Ways, what is the Tensor 2? What does that mean? Is that yeah. is it a good chip? Is it a bad chip? We don't know. It lives in its own little vacuum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very tech enthusiast world. And so is it a reference phone? Is it like a, a showing off what Google, like, um, you but know, used machine to be, learning and AI I can do? Well, yeah. I feel like they want more now. Well, yeah. It's well, like they want to compete with a flagship. It's flagship, you know, yeah. they, you know, rather than folk, I mean, like they do. And in the made by Google event, they had a lot of amazing examples of like cross device and comp computational photography and, you know, machine learning and, and like natural language and all that kind of stuff. But it's like they have all that, but they somehow still want to keep one foot in that in that flagship box and create, you know, a high end phone that people want to talk about, that reviewers want to review, that people like us want to talk about. And it's kind of like I, I don't know how these kind of competing goals are going to play out. I'm going like, to call it here there. It's hopeless. The reason they're sleepwalking through these events is because they know Rick Osterloh knows. He was the guy who, when the Pixel 4 came out, days before the event yelled at the team saying the battery life's terrible it's like they know it's hopeless and and by the way to announce a new phone and watch two weeks after you kill stadia <laughs> oh stadia a it's, lot of people are still really really pissed off it's about another that. reason people Rightly don't so. trust google they say well yeah. google's just it's a hobby I want Google Reader back, by the way, if someone's listening. Oh, yeah. God. That's what I yeah. want back. Absolutely. <laughs> that was my favorite thing. Oh, Actually, I, our... we, we had a conversation on uh, This Week in Google about this because you could make the case that Google was consciously killing RSS, that they didn't want an open standard. That they they so what they did is they made Google Reader to dominate and then killed it. Like let's put it out of its business, just as they did with XMPP. They didn't want an open standard. They wanted a standard they controlled, and I think RCS is probably their attempt to control it. And it's going to die too because it's. I'm just frustrated with Google. I, I mean, that's, they've moved. Into, many people are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've. It seems to me they've moved into the rent-seeking part of the tech cycle. They're not actually creating that much anymore. It's just a question of how can we wring as much money out of our various properties that we've built up over the years and satisfy shareholders. Yeah. I mean, YouTube I mean, how old has is become. Now? Yeah. Oh, Almost twenty, see, right? Almost yeah. twenty. Over over twenty. Over I think. twenty. Over twenty. Wow. Yeah. So it's I mean, old. It's an old, old line tech company, and well, they. Have, I, mean, I will submit, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. 
that honestly, if it weren't the only thing they make money on is search and search ads. And if it weren't for that, none of this would have flown. They are now realizing that and killing stuff like Stadia. They should. They had no reason to launch in the first place. They had no expertise in gaming. Ben Ben Thompson says basically that they, they kind of knew how networking, you know, at cloud worked. So he says the business side of Stadia was lazy and stupid. <laughs> it, yeah. uh, but because they didn't know gaming and they just said, they know, "Well, we can and, do this." But they, you know what, like. It's doable. Like, think about Microsoft and what a success story that's been overall into like a company that wasn't into gaming and really ingrained themselves and became really successful. It took a long with, time. They lost a lot they, of money on Xbox for years and years and years. Yes. And that it takes that level. Halo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think commitment and a little luck. Maybe and a, luck and timing. And you're right, because I think when it was Balmer, I don't know if he even knew what Xbox was or had a strategic vision but clearly because because uh because uh satya nadella comes from he, he ran azure comes from cloud he saw oh you know this could really be an entree into cloud cloud gaming uh and i think i think the long-term prospects for microsoft gaming are very good especially now that they're acquiring uh activision they bought Minecraft. That was a brilliant move, right? Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant yeah, move. For sure. Uh, they have shown, since Balmer left, a really good strategic vision. That's just one example in a bunch of areas. I mean, uh, Satya oh, yeah. Nadella, I mean, just complete aside, probably top five CEO oh, yeah. in the country, yeah. period. And Sundar Pichai, bottom five. Is that controversial mm -hmm. to say? It's always controversial to make a bottom five. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, I mean, there's so many that could be Where does Elon the, go on that? Yeah, I know. And you got you got plenty of people <laughs> yeah. belong there. But but honestly, I, I Sundar is not doing with, a good job with Google. It, maybe it's I not his fault. I would put him on a par with Paul Ossolini uh, of, of Intel. Yeah. Um, well, you know, good, way, good guy to when it comes to making money. No vision whatsoever. Yeah. A uh, no plan CEO. for the future. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And in that business, you cannot coast. You cannot Probably. sleepwalk. Because you'll get your lunch eaten. There's mm -hmm. there's sharks out there. Best not to walk around asleep. The uh, yeah. so, well, the interesting thing about search, and you've probably seen it recently, and maybe you've talked about it, is uh, Gen Z is doing less they use TikTok. Searching. They're using TikTok. <laughs> I tried it. I like tried them. Like, actually, this kind of works for certain kinds of things. You're doing travel stuff. It actually is really quite useful. I understand. <laughs> it's a little weird. We'll talk about I mean, that for, in a little for bit. Us, for us, for us, oldies. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but not for them. There's a lot. There's a lot going on there. There's a lot to say about that. Uh, I just want to point out that f Google freaked out because everybody thought the future of search was the Facebook social graph. Remember that? <laughs> and so Google created Google Plus, another fine Google product. Uh, uh, actually, to be honest, had, like most other Google products, it was really good, but they couldn't, they killed it. I had three quarters of a million followers on that thing. Yeah. I missed yeah. them. It was great. I loved it. So Google's flaw flaw is not that they make bad products, because I think the Pixel 6 is a great product. Pixel 7 is going to be a great product. But they I, can't follow through. There's something wrong. That's the well, and there, there's there was one contention that the problem is the uh, mismatched incentives at Google. And this you could blame Sundar Pichai for, which is you get promotions at Google for coming up with a new product. You don't get any support for supporting that product. Google, and that's why Google invents a lot of stuff, and it all it all flops in the long run, like Stadia, because they don't incent people to be on the you know the team of the long term product. They incent people to invent the next thing, and that, that makes that's sense. a that's a big problem at a lot of tech companies. Uh, and I've been at large tech companies where that is exactly the case. Where, say for example, you have a team and and their job is to make you know features that end up on like the front page of Gizmodo, and then the rest of us who have to do the hard work of keeping you know a service or a software scalable and maintainable and all these very unsexy words don't get as much recognition so yeah the incentives incentives are way off because when you move fast and break things yeah. uh someone got to fix it 
Uh, and so <laughs> I, I totally agree. And it's, it's kind of messed up as someone who works on this side of it. And, and presumably it also kind of results in kind of mixed business results as well. Is it a, is it bad management <laughs> when, or is it, I, think, I mean, I, I, think, I don't know. I think sometimes like, and I, I think a lot of times it is structural. And again, I am just an engineer. So this is like the perspective from oh, which I don't I'm say doing just it, an engineer. I was going to say just, just an engineer. goodness. So just the people, people who keep, make this stuff. stuff. The, the data I mean, must flow. Way, you keep it going. That's, <laughs> that's the way it feels at times. And I think that, you know, a lot of times I think that, especially in tech, a lot of people are, are chasing. And I, I think that's exactly what it is. What is it that will get the verge and what is it that will get yeah. wired and Gizmodo and will cause like a tweet to go viral. And I think because of like the history of the way that tech has exploded, that's still a, a, you know, a bar of success. And so I think a lot of companies tend to chase that quite a bit. And it, and it, and it kind of seeps into like, you know, OKRs and like, like goals and, and strategies. And then it kind of trickles down to the fact where, you know, like certain things that are not sexy, but that are really important for people to, you know, to kind of for customers and for, for users to be both happy and, you know, safe and secure in your service and your software, you know, don't get as much attention. And I, I do agree that that, that causes eventual issues in terms of incentives. I mean, certainly I, I do. And then, and like speaking for certain people, like there are a lot of people on the Android team, just to want to shout out that are very good at this kind of thing. But I think when you have a big company, and I've been at a couple of companies that aren't just a product, but a family of products where things like cross selling and like, you know, how do we integrate like this product in this product? Like that, like uh, Ron Richards on, on triple, uh, triple, always says like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. And that that generally seems to be the case a lot. And so all of that kind of gets mixed up. And I feel like there's some lack of follow through because of all these like different things going on and these like mismatched incentives. So, yeah, eh, the big tech. Yay. Yeah, it may. I mean, honestly, <laughs> as an engineer, I'm sure you know this. It's much more fun to create a new product than to maintain oh, yeah. legacy code. Oh, uh, yeah. and, I, and I'm sure that there are all sorts of incentives. But that ultimately comes down to the leadership countering that notion and saying no 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 it's really important that we make sure that our legacy products are well maintained and work and perform because that's where we make our money and you know i know maybe you don't want to do this when but you got to maintain <laughs> your product uh that's leadership that's that's called yeah. good business that's called running the company properly and so ultimately it comes down on sundar pachai's uh, shoulders and the executive team i think yeah, engineers are always going to want to invent. That's, I mean, I. That's why I'm not that's, a code monkey because I, I don't want to maintain legacy code. <laughs> I don't want to look at anybody's I, code base. I want to do my stuff. That's why so many people want to start companies. You right. see it all in yeah. the news, and then you see twenty million dollars raised, and you're like, "Oh, it's going to be sunshine and roses." Uh, <laughs> when it is, it's always well, sunshine. Yeah. So what's so octane? You're at the stage now. Okay. You're, you're past that stage now. You're kind of in the, you're past the growth. You're kind of in the maintenance. Keep it going. Is it harder? Uh, it is easier to grow product. Like it is much easier to go, like it's much harder to go from zero to 1 million in an annual recurring revenue sure. than it is from one and above. It just, it just. Is it more like, fun? Uh, it depends on a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Uh, I it, it depends on your personality. I really like the early part of building. Uh, I also like you know building teams. So there's something fun at each stage. But, but you know, then that's why Sergey and Larry go off and run their blimp projects, and you bring in adults because it's time to run the company, right? Not to invent the company. It's a very yeah, different skill set. It's a different and skill set. And very few people are great at both. Maybe that's part of the problem. You've got a lot of founders. Uh, I think an awful, I, I think a lot of the problems with Google have been because they've hired far too many managers and not enough innovators. Um, Do you just think it started with Eric Schmidt? No, I mean, Schmidt was needed because otherwise Google wouldn't have been the success it was without. Yeah, you Larry, know, Larry the, called it adult supervision. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that but partnership it, worked out. Yeah. No, it worked out perfectly. Yeah. Uh, well, not perfectly, but it worked out very well. But Google <laughs> stopped creating. You know, I mean, where where are the big announce? I mean, do you remember when Gmail first launched? Yeah. It was a bombshell on the email front. They launched it on April the first, which is a journalist we really resented because it was like, is this an is April Fool or not? Is this another you know? Google toilet internet or what? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that Android whole, you know, the photos, the the whole thing, it used to create things, and right now. 
with the, particularly with the you know the the made by Google day, it's just like hi, here's something which everyone else has been doing for a while and some minor software tweaks. Yay us. You know, I I wasn't actually <laughs> at the event, but I understand they did they've copied Apple's practice of having cheerleaders in the back of the room who, you know, will woo oh, up every that. single event. Oh, God, and it's just like once you've done that, you've lost your central tech argument. By the way, Larry Page's Kitty Hawk, which was his electric <laughs> air taxi startup, is folding. Uh, they announced that on ah. Wednesday. Yeah, just one more, <laughs> one more <laughs> nail in the coffin. Hey, I have to take a break. I am having so much fun. I don't want to stop the conversation, but we have lots more to talk about, including the the existential question: Did Lufthansa ban air tags, and why? <laughs> that's all. <laughs> that's all coming up. <laughs> ben Parr, great to get you back. So nice to see you. I want to hear all about your uh, new podcast. Business Envy, businessenvyshow.com, and Octane AI. It's really fun to have you here. Good to see you again. Of course, Ian Thompson, always a pleasure from the register.com now. I don't have to say .co.uk, although I bet that still works, right? <laughs> oh, yes. You yes, know, I of thought course. of you when the Queen passed. I thought, because I remember you really uh, liked the old lady, and uh, well, I bet I mean, that was I'm a, a hard Republican. moment. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, I'm a Republican with a small R, but... Um, I think choosing your head of state, the army, and the church by birth lottery is a really <laughs> stupid idea. Um, but yet. on the other hand, but yet <laughs> she did a lousy job really very well indeed. Yeah. No one should ever have to do that job. But yeah. she put a time. I was I was actually kind of depressed for a couple of days. I thought you might I be. I was thinking, believe it or not, I was thinking of you uh, and thinking, yeah. you know, I, I should say condolences. And also, did you see the footage of the queue? Because that was the most British Ten memorial hour ever. Line. Oh, 13. It, I mean, and David, David Beckham, Beckham got David in. David Beckham waited for 10 13 hours. hours. That's awesome. While all the VIPs just, oh, yeah, I'll turn up, do a quick walk past, no, and the rest of yeah. it. Yeah. No, I mean, it kind of it showed, I mean, it showed who we were as a people. She's always been there. And while I think her idiot son is going to make a lousy king, we shall see. I, you know, I predict that Charles will uh, somehow magically uh, take the glow and and become the king, and uh, it's it's, you know what I realized? Yeah, it's a terrible idea, but at the same time, it's really nice to have a head of state who's not political, who's mm -hmm. just there to kind of reassure people, and she was very good at that, and and Charles, if he's kind of starting to look a little bit like a prig. But if he can find a way to become the nation's heart in the way that yeah. QE2 well, did. Well, I mean, yeah, it was, it, was, it was very tricky because in he's been holding on for this job for, for, you know, for <laughs> over 60 years. Um, and he does have ideas about ruling the country as opposed to being you know, a constitutional monarch, which is his job. Um, really? I he has very, aspirations of, of having power? Well, I mean, he's been sending letters to ministers oh, for you know, the last couple That's of decades good. about what he wants done. Yeah. I mean, we forget that the royal family can actually veto legislation if it affects them personally. And considering he owns Cornwall or owned Cornwall, <laughs> um, you know, that was a fairly wide remit. But um, I don't know. His his first address was very well done. I liked it. Uh, we'll yeah. see if he grows into the role. Yeah. But as I say, the the very idea of a of a birth monarchy is just logic. No, but, it, but as I said, I think there's a, a, a emotional value to having a non-political leader that you can mm. kind of uh, project upon, if for want of a better word, well, your concerns I, I, and your fears. I think that's a good thing. I actually, um, sorry, just interject, but I heard a really brilliant YouTuber named Philosophy Tube, who is British, once uh, basically said that the queen is the UK's waifu. Yeah. In, <laughs> yeah. And, and I thought waifu? that was the most waifu. Yeah. Um, Sorry, how do I go into why explain what do I yeah, yeah, I understand totally. I don't think Absolutely. you can explain that. <laughs> aspirational, kind of an, an, an admiring, aspirational kind of relationship where you kind of okay. have this parasocial yeah, no, relationship. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yes, the UK's waifu uh, philosophy too. Not my idea, but I thought that was a very distinct way of kind of describing that emotional connection. It's like your pillow um, oh your my. pillow bride. It's uh <laughs> So it's wouldn't like, want to disrespect I, the queen I, by saying I, such, but yeah. No, like it's, no, it really, no, I, I think, no, you're exactly right. It's, it, and that's why I said project. It's somebody who is almost a blank slate, really. 
Yes. That mm-hmm. you onto which you project your hopes and fears, mm-hmm. and it helps emotionally helps you. And it, you know we don't have like that in the United States. All we've got is horrible presidents. <laughs> and uh, it'd be nice to have somebody who is just apolitical that we could just, you know, kind of. Well, I mean, the U.S. has its own monarchy at this stage. I mean, remember yeah, George W. Bush? You know, yeah. it's it's not. I the thought first you were going to say the Kardashians. The, the, oh, no, no, I was, I that's think, I mean, Card- Kim actually, Kardashian that's is a cool. waifu. That's- you're right. They are. They are unfor- better or worse. Our waifus. Oh dear. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah. There's, no, there's the title. Existential crisis. Now I'm oh, depressed. Gosh. Oh gosh. Oh. It's Lord. great to have Wintu Dao. Uh, she's my waifu, and it's so good to have her lead developer. No, I'm kidding. Lead developer at Adobe, co-host of All About Android. First time on the show. Thrilled to have you. Thank you for being here. Thrilled to be here. I want to take a little break. I hate to do it because we're having so much fun. But I, uh, I want to talk to you about Wealthfront. And now is a good time to mention, I think, Wealthfront. Wealthfront's goal is to make building long-term wealth, long-term underscore wealth, easy, offering both high-yield savings and automated investing accounts to do just that. Beautiful interface. You'll love the app. If the bank's keeping money that could be yours, if you're earning less than Wealthfront's 2.55% APY, yeah, what, find out what your savings account's getting. It ain't that, I guarantee you. Federal interest rates, of course, they're going up this year and they're going to continue going up. That means banks have been earning more on your savings. Have their interest rates been going up? No. According to the FDIC, the average U.S. bank has only raised their rates to 0.17% this year. Do you hear that? Wealthfront's now offering their clients a rate that's about 15 times higher. And that's just the Wealthfront cash account. Don't let your bank keep interest you could be earning. Join nearly half a million people who already use Wealthfront to earn 15 times more than the average U.S. saving bank savings account. It's easy to sign up. You'll get unlimited transfers that are completely fee-free, up to $1 million in FDIC insurance through partner banks. And get this, there are no account fees, no minimum balance. And if you sign up right now, Wealthfront.com slash twit, you get a free $50 bonus with the initial deposit of $500. Wealthfront.com slash twit to get started. Get your free $50 bonus with an initial deposit of 500 That's 10%. That's nice. Wealthfront.com slash twit. This has been a paid endorsement for Wealthfront. Wealthfront.com slash twit. We thank them so much for their support for all of you. So uh, Lufthansa sort of denying this, sort of not denying this. Lufthansa bans air tags in luggage. And of course, why? Because pub- passengers have been sh- publicly shaming Lufthansa with the location of their lost bags. It is better if you do not know where your bag is. Uh, Lufthansa says, well, we don't ban them, but you do have to take the battery out of them before you put them in your bag. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> they work so well without the battery. <laughs> You know, you know uh, what? You you know this why this rings really false. I I spent a year as a the editor of an aviation IT magazine. Oh, so you know? I, I didn't know. So that. I I oh, talked to, I talked to pilots. Yeah. About when that first mobile phone ban came in, I was talking to a pilot about it. And he goes, "No, we we know when someone's got their mobile phone on in the aircraft because it's usually one of us." You know, you can hear it. It doesn't interfere that badly. This whole Lufthansa thing strikes me very much of we don't want the PR problem rather than there's an actual genuine physical danger here. Here's an example, a Lufthansa tweet from Keep On Discovering on Twitter. I just traveled from Athens uh, to Charles de Gaulle business class at a two and a half hour transit in Munich. Somehow, he's talking to Lufthansa, you've lost my bag in between. Apparently your team can't find it. But Apple's AirTag says it's in Toulouse. <laughs> I, I've, <laughs> I've been doing this for years, but with the tile tags to yeah, track all thing. of my luggage. Mm-hmm. Same thing. And and it's incredible. And it's incredible like you like lose something, you're even just trying to like track when it's gonna go and get come in. And so I had to like do a disclose, like year a disclosure years ago, I sat on the advise innovation advisory board of Lufthansa. So this is fascinating for me. I have no context uh-huh. or anything. So I will I, I, I will straight up say uh, I am surprised that they're taking this stance. 
It's definitely from uh, probably a more conservative group of Lufthansa. It is not the stance that I would take by any probably way, shape, or form. The wrong way to get go about this, I would agree. A public You're not going to see it in the U.S. I can't. I can't imagine they would do that in the U.S. It's such a like. So it is a, a battery, and I guess you know they don't let you put your laptop anymore in checked luggage, right? But it's a tiny little thing. I don't think it's. It's cause, cause for concern. Honestly, we cover thermal runaways a lot, and I've never heard of a coin-sized battery going full thermal runaway. No, it just doesn't happen. They're engineered that way. Oh, you know? oh, oh, just, oh, oh. But also, I, gotta say, I mean, my wife tried the air tag in the luggage thing on our last trip, and it was actually quite stress-inducing because we were sitting on the plane, and she's like, this is still showing up as being in the terminal. Where is my luggage? Where is my luggage right now? And then when we landed, of course, it was all all right because it was just a delay from the actual signal getting through. Yeah, you don't want to pay too but, much attention to it. But, you know. If but they, no, I mean, Lufthansa's position is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Yeah. It's kind of, I have to say, uh, everything now Apple has does this. So as I leave home, it says, my phone says, you just left your laptop behind. I know. I didn't want to bring it into work. <laughs> it's a little, it can be annoying. And it, I've had the same problem with bags. You know, you... You, I keep an air tag in my bag, and I will on Lufthansa. Good luck finding it, Lufthansa. Uh, but when you then get to the hotel and you go for a walk, your phone says, "Hey, you just left your bag behind." And it's like, I, I, I'm sure there's a way to fix that. I don't know. It's, it's a little annoying. I'm just saying. But uh, at also, the same if time, you've got travel, if you've got travel insurance, losing your luggage is not the worst thing in the world. Because if they lose, if I think I don't know how it is over here, but in the UK. It's more than seventy-two hours, then the you know the airline will pay for new clothes shopping. So really, quids it? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah. lost my bags for over three days. How in, much did uh, they Can give Lion. you? How much did they give you, Ben? Thousand bucks. I really? Think. Oh, decent oh. amount. Oh, I thought got, they were like score, only liable for like fifty but, bucks or something. I got six hundred out of Virgin oh, America, but okay. no, it's it's it was bad. Was an international trip. It depends where you lose it. If if you're going somewhere and you lose it, that's bad. If you're coming home, you got some extra underwear at home. You're probably okay. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and you pity the poor, poor devil. Actually, opens the bag and finds your old underwear. But no. <laughs> I'm gonna just buy one one thousand dollar pair of underwear. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> you can probably yeah, I mean, do that in California. Of France, yeah. <laughs> all right. Two words that strike. It is Halloween coming up. It's spooky month. I guess that's what the Gen Z calls them. Uh, so two words to strike terror into anyone's heart. Elon Musk. <laughs> Are you scared? I, I'm entertained. Uh, it is entertaining. You got to say that. Uh, I know there are people who listen to this show who say, have already pressed the stop button. Um, I don't blame you, but we got to cover this. This is a story. It's a huge story. I promise we'll make it entertaining, everyone. Stick around. <laughs> Elon's doing his best. Yeah. Just, uh, uh, yeah. Do you? I first of all, I, I was asking this question earlier. Are Elon's tweets weirder on the weekend? Like maybe he's, <laughs> you know, having more bored. Hi, he's more slash bored. drunk slash yeah something yeah yeah. Because I'll show you his uh, his most recent tweet coming soon from uh. the Boring Company. New uh, new uh, fragrance called Burnt Hair. Uh, from okay. from Singed. So what is he smoking? I mean, seriously. <laughs> you, yeah, we already know what he's smoking. Oh, actually, we've seen things. him do it. We've seen so, him do it. He did say that uh, this week that he finds it um, fun and amusing and relaxing to tweet. Um, but some of these tweets, for instance, his peace plan for Russia. Mm. Oh, uh, and China uh, as well. Did you see yeah, that one? Yeah. Um, no, what was Chinese this? government of, a so, Chinese government official formally congratulated him, saying, "Actually, yes, a split state solution is part of our plan for Taiwan." <laughs> and oh, it was just oh, like, this was oh, Elon's plan for goodness. Taiwan. Great, yeah. And you yet know, he mixes it in with these amazing shots of the SpaceX Dragon, you know, docking with the space station, doing stuff that NASA seems to struggle with. It's a very weird admixture of. Billionaire cockiness, uh, extracurricular drug use, and genius. <laughs> well, you see, the, you gotta, the Germans have. Oh, sorry. There you go. I want to hear what the okay. Germans have. I, I was going to say the German. The Germans have have words. They probably for have a word so for many things. Yeah, they probably. But have they a word do for have it. a word for it. Yeah, it's called Faschidiot. 
Uh, it, 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 it means someone who is incredibly smart in one or two areas and an absolute idiot in yeah, others. Yeah, he's a fesh idiot. That's exactly um, right. Yeah. And I, I'm the, using my other that. favorite. Yeah, I mean, also after what he said about Ukraine, it was just there's another German word which is I think Beschallschaft, which is a face made for smacking. And I think <laughs> I think the Ukrainians would really feel feel that way. Honestly, at the if your peace plan gets the vote of the Russian government and the Chinese government, you're probably on the wrong track. I'm just saying. I'm just thinking. Well, seriously, Unless he's trying to curry favor from the Chinese government. Well, and then that's the that's the you yeah. know, the deeper question. We always ask this question about Donald Trump is like what what is his motive? And honestly, sometimes I do think Elon's playing 12D chess. It just he's doing it drunk or something. Uh, <laughs> he's doing it on Molly. Uh, so this week he wrote a letter saying, OK, OK, fine, I'll buy Twitter. Uh, thereby putting the trial off for a month. Also, maybe more importantly, putting off his deposition, which was scheduled for Thursday for another month. Also, ending discovery, and we were talking about discovery earlier. Discovery, these trials, you might win, you might lose, but they're almost always bad for the participants because stuff comes out that's embarrassing. The text oh, messages. This, oh, like, I yeah. know, I know. I, I, okay, just a, a couple things I have to say here. One, uh, like Elon's mindset, and you can see it through the text, is uh, he is never wrong. And... It's not be in a, like it's because everyone is fawning over him, right. and no one's There's really. There's so many properly. ass kissers in his. You know what did Jason Calacanis say? And and you and I are both buds with Jason. I love Jason. Yeah, but I'm embarrassed. I, I, I for wasn't going to bring it up, but my goodness, that was, <laughs> I was, was going to bring it up. Fist in the mouth, cringe. I mean, it was just, so just like don't say it, don't say it. Oh no, you went there. What did he say? <laughs> I can carry your sword, boss, or something like oh. that. He volunteered to be the CEO of Twitter, pestered Elon over and over again. I remember, Ben, you probably got this email. I got the email. Elon said, we're going to get together a consortium of investors to help Elon buy Twitter. And would you like to put some money in? Uh, and Elon eventually had to say, and it's in these messages, would you knock it off? This is embarrassing. Mm. Elon actually did not look like a do doofus in these messages. It was all the people messaging him that looked like dopes i guess but what elon i think was afraid of and i think that there's also a case to be made here there is evidence that elon was talking before the whistleblower was talking with peter's uh, zatko mudge the, there is a message where he said let's go to a more secure platform there apparently is some evidence they moved to signal and those messages have now been deleted but there might be a problem there with Elon talking to Mudge before he blew the whistle, you think? That Elon doesn't want that to get out. Well, it's interesting. In, in her ruling, the judge did say that there were significant concerns about the signal messages, or rather the gap in the message string. The missing message. Which was, yeah, which was supposedly attributed to signal. So, yeah, that could get really ugly. Um, that might even be criminal. I don't know. But, I mean, there's... There's more than oh, just... Oh, this is America. Execs don't get prosecuted <laughs> for being criminal, for it, it, goodness it, sake. E Elon, you get Elon a minor be, fine. <laughs> I mean, look, this is the point of why people use Signal uh, right, is for yeah. this exact use yeah. case. And no, Elon's not going to get punished for that. Uh, but Elon is going to get, quote, unquote, punished by... He's going to eventually buy Twitter one way or the other. That's just how you it think, seems. So that's, so that's, the, yeah, that's the question for the panel. Is he sincere and is he going to actually complete the deal? Or, I mean, that... That's really the question. You think he, he is, Ben? He has no choice. Is like that's like he's trying. He might be trying to make moves to delay things, or to not do deposition, or to try to add. People a are term saying maybe he thought he was going to lose, and so he wanted to preempt the trial like that. Right? I think. Don't yeah. get it. He's he's he is uh, in historically bad at depositions because um, you cannot lie in a deposition, and he's historically bad at them. And he doesn't want to go through that. And none of us really want to go through no, that. I that is either. not a fun. Yeah, especially on Molly. So, yeah. <laughs> Whichever drug of your choice you want to have your deposition in, that is up I to love you. you, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you can keep on saying that in the jail cell. But for Elon, you know, like he, he's, he's stuck. You know, he's stuck. He's going to have to buy it. He's going to have to buy it. Like, I, I, I'm sure he's trying to figure out every single way to like weasel out. But 
I think the truth is that he's going to buy it and then he's going to have that chip on his shoulder to try to prove everyone wrong. Like I can actually make this like worth more money and I can implement what I'm saying and it won't break all of Twitter. And I he's, if both, he buys it, at which he says he will, fifty four dollars and twenty cents a share, it's way overvalued, right? It's he's paying, he's like buying a car for fifty percent over the asking price. It's not. It's like Microsoft trying to buy Yahoo for what was it, <laughs> forty eight billion? Yeah, you know? yeah. They breathed it's a sigh of relief when that fell through. I could tell you. Oh, I saw Barman give a talk on that, and he was just like, "That was the biggest." lucky break of my oh, career man was getting turned down by jerry Yang, <laughs> and he was just like seriously we dodged such a bullet on but that isn't point. that interesting i mean that's maybe what happened to elon he thought it was a good idea and then a day later he went oh what was i thinking this is a terrible idea tried to get out of it almost immediately well but he yeah, could well, have he could have kept the due diligence portions in in that deal and he didn't and that's part of what's screwing him over because if it had the due diligence portions, he would have been able to get out after due diligence uh, pieces. And he rushed it is yeah. like what he did because it, it felt mm. he probably felt like he had to rush it. And like I get why he wants to own, you know, a central source of media, but it is an overvalued it is an overvalued piece. But be like there's no way out and Twitter's not going to let him get out of it. Uh, the shareholders are not going to let him get out of it. I don't know. I cannot think of a way he gets out of it. I'd be curious to see, but I'm starting to already move on to like, what does uh, Twitter look like yeah. after Elon okay. owns it? Do you call it Musker? Okay. Do you send Musks? <laughs> yeah. Is there going <laughs> to, you press Elon's head when you send a Musk. I would, well, I would how do people feel about case. this? Ahead, He's yeah. talking about this X app and as an Android developer, I'm curious what you think on this one, because all this X app stuff looks like, a coping strategy for, oh, my it, God, I can't believe what I said I'd buy Elon's last problem night. It's insane. Right now. Here's yeah. Elon's problem right now. <laughs> he, not only is he going to have to spend $44 billion, but the banks who have lent him money, Larry Ellison, the Saudi sovereign fund, I would guess they're not compelled, right, Brian, uh, uh, Ben? They're not compelled to go through with it, or they, maybe they are. They're looking at huge losses. He has to convince the investor because if he doesn't get money from them, he's selling a lot of Tesla stock. That's going to be a big business problem going down the road. So he has to convince investors he has the genius plan. That's why he tweeted, Twitter is, what does he say, just accelerant for the everything app, X, the everything app. So that's a great question, Ian, for, for when can, why isn't there an everything app? He's likening it to WeChat in China. Why don't we have a WeChat in the U.S.? And could you make one? Uh, <laughs> no, this is insane. So I, I think part of it. No, <laughs> this is too easy. Insane. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. So I, I, I think that it's miss. It's it's totally missing a lot of things. So uh, just like a lot of other things, like kind of something succeeding depends on a lot of different things, uh, timing luck, just like a, a lot of different things. And so I think, I mean, I'm not really an expert. So as far as I can tell, uh, as just an engineer, is that, you know, WeChat, I think, grew organically, you know, as a chat app and like kind of just like though kind of reflecting back on the whole RCS problem, messages, iMessages, whatever, is that, you know, chat is such an interesting, you know, um, kind of function and like app category within our mobile space. It kind of makes sense that WeChat is what it is because of this kind of organic nature, especially with chat apps being very country, like like heavily country country based, like outside of the US. There, like a lot of chat networks are by country. So you have like a cow talk in uh, Korea, WeChat in China, uh, Line in Japan. And so, especially given I what I understand of like Chinese society and everything, it kind of makes sense that, you know, we, they started with WeChat, which was this kind of like great platform for, you know, communicating with everyone um, over apps, kind of building on top of that. And so in our country, we have it different. We have this whole like plethora of chat apps and as well, not to mention the other things that X is supposed to do, like freaking uh, financial transactions and purchasing like that. That function has already been, you know, taken up by various things like Venmo, Google Pay, Cash, whatever you have. And to... You know, and kind of like one of the problems facing app developers in the year of our smartphone 2022 is the fact that you already have so much competition, so much like embedded, you know, um, user bases that trying to come up with the new thing just to plant 
whatever exists is a is is a hard you know challenge in any individual industry in any individual segment any individual like vertical whatever you want to call it so the idea that Elon Musk is going to take Twitter which is a social media network or social network of you know its own very wide swath of problems political sociological security everything else and then build you know the big app on top of it and get not just Twitter users to use all these things, but try to bring average people that don't like Twitter or that aren't that aren't kind of like doom scrolling every day to bring this on is is just is just kind of fighting against that kind of internal em- entropy that people tend to have with the things that they like. It's like the IKEA problem. Once you have something that works, it takes a lot for people to move on from that. And so that is like so you, kind of a lot of the, the problem that I, people are navigating this in the app space. So I don't see him replacing everything with X app. You don't uh, think Americans are looking for the one app to rule them all? I don't, I personally don't think so. Um, We're completely I mean, happy to have 20 apps that we use. We use Venmo and we use yeah. Twitter. It's easy to switch between and they're better individual than apart. Yeah. Like humans, right? Yeah. Like, but Let's like, not forget I, that WeChat I, succeeded in China at a time when the Great Firewall of China blocked Facebook and Twitter and a whole <laughs> lot of social services. So there wasn't that choice in China. Mm-hmm. There was really a lot of support for Tencent from the Chinese government to exactly. do this. That's uh, the rub. They got sweetheart yeah. deals with the trains, and so it, you could. It's it, you're not in communist China with the Great Firewall of China blocking you from all these Western apps. You're just not in that environment. It's a it's a different environment, but like really to understand like the X piece because. This is a dream that Elon has had for 20 years. It was the name of his first company was X. It was the name of his first company. Mm -hmm. It merged with uh, Peter Thiel's company. What was it called? Confinity. Uh, And it turned, yeah, Confinity, and it turned into PayPal. Right. And, you know, he was successful as a software founder with PayPal, of course. I would not be, I make a prediction. Uh, I would not be shocked if Elon put Twitter and x.com together and turn it into some combination of Twitter plus like a financial app and use Twitter as a basis for that. Added some crypto, go to it. Uh, will it succeed? I don't think so. I think that's extraordinarily difficult, but I think he's wanted to do something like this actually for a very long time, at least the x.com thing. He wanted another shot at it. Uh, now he could use Twitter to go and like make another shot at it. I can see that being what's in his head right now. He, st- by the way, uh, lost control of the X.com domain, but bought it back. He has it. Right. Um, but owning a web domain is meaningless in this day and age, right? It's, if it doesn't succeed on mobile, it's not going to succeed. If you can't put the pieces together, then, you know, and if you can't deliver the app. And why and is yes, Twitter is- a good place to start? I don't even think Twitter is the right place. You would much prefer to have WhatsApp than Twitter, right? Or, or Facebook Messenger, or even Apple Messages. And by the way, Facebook would love to do the everything app. So would Apple. Neither one has tried or succeeded. They both have payments. They both have parts of it. They just have the logistics of this as well. Ridiculous. I mean, I you know, it's hard enough to build one good financial app. It's hard enough to build one secure yeah. chat app. It's hard enough to do one thing. And, you know, we've already talked about millions of examples, say for Google example, where even just individual products and kind of brand and vision coherence is just... It is apparently very hard, uh, unsurprisingly. So I don't, it's I, just the technical and like logistics of doing all of this in one app and trying to supplant every other app is just insane. I wouldn't, as an engineer, I'd be like, nope. No well, and Elon's right. got another <laughs> challenge, which is already since his bid for Twitter, 700 people have left. Uh, I don't know when, if you know anybody who works at Twitter, but I would bet that a lot of current employees are thinking, yeah, let me just polish up that old resume here. <coughs> this isn't what I signed uh, up for, type yeah. thing. Particularly no. if the share price jumps on the buy on the buyout, because <coughs> no, they can no, then it's been... cash out the shit. Isn't that? Oh, oh I see. Then they yeah, can... they cash out the day. Then they, they can, then they can yeah. yeah, they can cash out their shares their shares at higher value. And one of the things from the tweets came through was that you know several people were saying once you take over, you can do a really good cull of headcount because all the people that don't like you are going to leave. And that gives you an instant reduction in headcount and and sort of fixed costs. But honestly, I, I just don't see it. I really don't. Which is a declining social network platform anyway. Um, important with the older guard, but not with the younger. Turning Twitter. this into some kind of, you know, 
X platform, which does everything, it's fantasy land. Twitter I'm went up more than 10 bucks really when stuff. he said, I'm going to buy it. Uh, currently $49.18. The difference, differential between $49.18 and $54.20, that $5 differential is exactly how much or little the stock market believes, right? If the stock mm -hmm. market really believed it was going to happen, the stock price would be $54.18. Yeah. Um, so that's problem number one. I just don't one. see how he's going to wriggle out of it. That's the thing. Uh, I think um, he is going to buy it. it. But there's still well, no, that, he's that five to, bucks worth of uncertainty. Yeah, he's going to buy it, the knife. Yeah. and then he's going to have different stories the next day. The very next day, the first story is going to be, I have returned to the greatest platform of all <laughs> time. <You think? laughs> Trump said, by the way, even if Elon invites me back, I've got Truth Social. I don't need Twitter anymore. No, he'll be back. Yeah, why he wouldn't can't. he? Why wouldn't he? He'll be back, yeah. period. Uh, but I have to say, I would bet that there'd be, I don't know, 5 million people would leave the minute that happened, right? And in protest. Here's Chris Anderson, the guy who does TED Talks. Amidst all the sneering, I'd love to, uh, like to offer a prediction for how the Elon Musk acquisition of Twitter will play out. First of all, I think the deal will indeed go through now, backed by an impressive roster of co-investors. Oh, get ready for some. Next, the company will undoubtedly experience a period of significant turmoil. Yes, there's a lot of change ahead. Many won't like it, but it will gradually become clear that a lot of the changes are actually quite exciting. First of all, fears of all content moderation being abandoned will prove unfounded. I agree with Chris on that. You can't. It just you make a cesspool. It becomes 4chan if you don't keep, keep, keep content moderation going. Instead, he says, the algorithm will be adjusted to avoid giving so much amplification to political divisiveness. Is that, is that the problem on Twitter? He says the debate that matters is not about who is on or off the platform, but what type of tweets get amplified. If that can change, everything changes. You know what's interesting? And this we saw this in the messages to Elon, too. Everybody who's anybody in tech has an idea of what Twitter needs to survive. What Twitter, what you could do with Twitter. And this is Chris Anderson's idea. Next steps will be put into place to verify all human Twitter accounts. That process will lay the basis for those accounts to be used for transactions a la WeChat using a Twitter crypto coin. Oh, boy. Uh, or USD. Mm. There will be crypto. There will be crypto. You're right. Yeah. There will be crypto. For example, people may be offered paid subscriptions and receive usable tokens. This could bring the company significant revenue plus create its own economy on which goods and services can be transacted. The sheer scale of Twitter can rapidly bring this to critical mass. About a year from now, growing numbers of people will be attracted to Twitter slash X. It will be far less prone to robo-spam and algorithmic-fueled outrage. Instead, it will offer lots of new functionality. There's plenty Elon can be legitimately criticized for. His own use of Twitter can seem ill-advised. He can give the impression of being more political than he is. And there's no question there will be many bumps along the way. But this is the key point. As a tech entrepreneur, he is without peer. In 2013... <laughs> no, no, oh, giggling. Look. no giggling. <coughs> oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> in, 20, in 2013, Chris Anderson goes on, I predicted he could become the world's richest man within a decade. Check. The next decade will be even more spectacular. Fixing Twitter may be as hard a job as converting Teslas into robo-taxis and proving the viability of a monster rocket capable of taking humanity to Mars. But within three years from today, I predict Elon will have accomplished all three. To which Elon says, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Elon was very and, happy with this tweet. Would story. you like a set of knee pads with that? But no. Good Lord, three years? Oh. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my quite goodness. A, quite a prediction, huh? We'll be on Mars. Twitter will be the WeChat of uh, the U.S., of the Western I world. wrote a story a while back where Musk was saying, we will be on, we will have our first Dragon capsule on Mars, I think, in 2019. Oops. It's a Musk deadline. You know, I mean, yeah. always add three years. Or well, at least. I want actual dragons. I want to ride an actual dragon <laughs> instead. It's probably, they're both just as likely. Fly faster. Yeah. Okay, fast, like, fly over to fly over to take Valley, a break. But before, we take, before we take the break, House of the Dragon or the Rings of Power? Votes. I haven't seen either. I haven't seen Slight. either because British Bake Off is on. Oh, so, oh, British Bake Off. That's a oh, write in. Okay. My 
my been? girlfriend and I, you met my uh, girlfriend, Deborah. She's a she's an amazing playwright. Your fiance, her and I, yes. We, her and I, uh, are uh, <laughs> just a, uh, over on the house, not House of Dragon, the uh, Lord Rings of Power. Yeah, I think one like, more episode. You know, it winds up Friday. It's it's just so beautiful. Yeah. Just it really is pretty. New Zealand. You is have gorgeous. to watch it on a giant screen yeah, with a yeah. popcorn. Yeah. And yeah, she'll just There's be like. There's far less uh, childbirth, and and oh. and. <laughs> I, I mean, H House of Dragon, I do think has like intrigue, but it's it's still a lesser Game of Thrones, and I think both have their places. Uh, I just think that that beauty of the Lord of the Rings is due to television, and like while the story may not be completely new, it's just gorgeous. I can forgive so many things because it's just the most beautifully shot show I've ever seen. When? GBBO, sorry. GBBO. GGBO. Yay, GBBO. excellent. That's right. Yeah. Great mm -hmm. British okay. Bake Off. So that's the winner yes. in this weird poll I just did. <laughs> With the write-in. The write-in, folks. You, you, you can't beat a Hollywood handshake. You know, it's just it's Absolutely. the way it is. You know? I, uh, I have to get in the, Greg on Although that I have to say, I apologize in advance for American viewers because they did Mexican week this week. Oh, and, you don't bake. And no, so you've seen no. someone peel an avocado with a potato peeler. Oh, and, Lord. And oh, American dear. just going, Oof. oh, dear goodness, no. <laughs> I saw the tweets. I saw the tweets. The British do yeah. not know how to peel avocados, apparently. We don't know how to do Mexican. When I first came over here, having eaten Mexican in, only in London, then you came over here and you taste it. So that's what it's supposed to taste like. This is brilliant. You know? On the next episode of Business Envy, Ben and Greg start a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> there is actually a story in The Independent. Bake Off contestant horrifies viewers with avocado peeling method during controversial <sighs> Mexican week episode. <laughs> Uh, oh. Honestly, I was flashing oh, back goodness. to last year where one of the cooking challenges was to make brownies. So many of my American friends were just like, I'm cooking brownies right now. These people have no idea how to do this whatsoever. <laughs> it's awful to watch. I can't watch oh. this. Ah, ah, she's killing you with a knife. Oh, ah. oh. I apologize in advance for those that haven't seen it. And for those that have, my sympathies. That was more difficult than anything I've had to watch all week. I actually, uh, I at first I was a big fan of House of the Dragon. There was a little bit too much horrible childbirth. Uh, and then and the Rings of Power was too complicated for me at first. But I have to say by episode six, the Rings of Power starts to take off. Episode seven, last Friday, wow. I think Rings of Power easily is going to win this one. So, so is it's a Rings tie. of Power like the Silmarillion? Or yeah, yeah, it's kind of yeah. ish, Silmarillion-ish. There's, yeah. there's oh. interesting, actually, legal issues because they didn't buy the Silmarillion rights. They bought uh, rights to like specific notes. It's from so the appendix use... of the Lord yes. of the Return of the or the Return of the King, I think. <laughs> so there's certain things they can't reference. They can't reference hobbits, but they talk about you know. Oh, is that why they never would say hobbits? There was Harfoots. Okay. Harfoots. Harfoots. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Grief. And then the time is frame the, is. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, is that in the byline that this is an adaptation of the appendix of? <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is the stuff that Tolkien did because he was really anal they about paid getting all the background <laughs> stuff. A half billion dollars for it, right? Or a quarter of a billion dollars? Paid a huge amount of money, and didn't get the rights to the Hobbits. For crying out loud, Jeff, get get that uh, together. Anyway, He's you're got right. Football. It is it is a Thursday night football. It is beautiful. I agree with you, Ben. Um, and I'm really kind of digging the storyline. So uh, it got you know it took a while as for me. It took f five episodes to really kind of gel, and now it's really on fire on all cylinders. So we're gonna well, need a tie a tiebreaker. We for need the group. it's it's we're a two tie two. between the Great British Bake Off <laughs> and the uh, Rings of Power. I don't know. Wow. John, you want to throw the tiebreaker? Hasn't seen it all. <laughs> Benito, you got a got an opinion, a dog in this hunt? He likes them both. He likes them both. You guys <laughs> suck. Oh, oh, come we, on. Uh, the the everyone listening has to like break the tie somehow. Yeah. Oh, good grief. Yes. It's to, I mean, to each their own. It's um you have some very good TV shows over here. We have some very good ones over there, but Hey, thank uh, you for Jesse Armstrong, though. I want to thank you for him. Ah, 
well, you know, we work along. We've got the actors. Michael Caine, I still think, is national treasure. Status Love him. The Love him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesse Armstrong, who uh, created uh, so many great shows, is the creator of Succession, which is oh. easily the best show on television. Uh, that is a lot of fun. Oh, it's got to be said. Yeah. Uh, he did In the Loop, which I thought was amazing. Um, and uh, that was based on uh, the thick of it, right? Yeah, the thick of it is well worth watching. Four Lions, by the way. I'm amazed if it actually gets shown over here because it's kind of subversive, but I do recommend that. Uh, but in the thick of it is amazing. Just be aware the language is That's what's great about salty. it. It's <laughs> salty Scottish <laughs> epithets. It's what it's great about it. And it was the inspiration for Veep. Uh, yes. So... Which was another one of the greatest shows on the American. So many TV. great U.S. shows yeah. are just inspired by the Brits. You great. think about The Office, uh, mm-hmm. Dragons Den. No, that's Canadian. You think about like whose line is it anyway? Oh, you think yeah. about yeah. House of Cards. House they, of there's cards. a lot. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Although I do find this is one of the kind of annoying things as a, as a Brit- British immigrant is that you took House of Cards and you took The Office, both of which in their original were two series, and that was it. You wrapped the whole thing up in two series. The Office carried on be after the main <laughs> character oh, left. We Americans yeah. know how to wring money out yes. of everything. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. no. Yes. I understand totally, but it's just incredibly frustrating because, you know, <laughs> the storylines get stretched so far. It even happened to Queer as Folk over here. It was just like, yeah. what do you, you know, it's like, is. Is money more important than creativity? Yes. Oh, hang on, I'm in America. <laughs> You're right. in America. <laughs> Welcome Not to America. Not even a question in America. Yeah. Our show today brought to you by Worldwide Technology. Love these guys. They're at the forefront of innovation, working with clients all over the world to bring technology to business, to transform business. But one thing I always love about WWT, they know business. At the heart of WWT is this notion that your business strategy and your execution go hand in hand, and they're very aware of that. So they work as a, to support you in achieving your business goals by using great technology. And it all starts with their ATC, their Advanced Technology Center. When the magazines got rid of their testing labs, I remember the great Ziff Davis testing labs, Worldwide Tech took over. They built this amazing thing. It started about 10 years ago. It's a research and testing lab with half a billion dollars in equipment from the leading OEMs, all the enterprise technologies. I remember going to visit in St. Louis right before COVID. We went out rack after rack, building after building of some of the most amazing technology. Why? Because, well, their engineers use it to build proofs of concept, to pilot new programs, to design something for your business. But now what's really cool, they offer to you access to this lab, hundreds of on-demand and schedulable labs featuring solutions that include technologies representing all the stuff you want to know about, the newest advances in cloud and security and networking, primary and secondary storage, data analytics and AI, DevOps, and on and on and on. So you can now get in there, test out products and solutions before you go to market. Yeah, there's, the engineers and partners use it all the time, but you can also use it. Not only the labs, but you can access technical articles, expert insights, demonstration videos, white papers, other tools to help you stay up to date with the latest technology and get ready for this. It's free. You don't even have to go to St. Louis. It's not. It's a physical lab space, but you can. It's virtualized. You can visit it anywhere in the world, any time of the day or night, 365 days a year. All you have to do is join the ATC platform. And by the way, while you're exploring the platform, when we were out there, we did an event. They do great events at WWT, and they have wonderful communities, places to talk about, to learn about technology trends, to hear the latest research and insights from experts. It it's a resource you've got to take advantage of. Whatever your business needs, WWT, Worldwide Technology, can deliver scalable, tried and tested, tailored solutions. Because WWT brings strategy and execution together to make the new world happen for your business. Learn more about WWT, the Advanced Technology Center. Gain access to those resources free. Again, free. All you have to do is go to WWT.com slash twit. Create that free account on the ATC platform. 
It's such a great way to learn. WWT.com slash twit. We thank them so much for their support uh, of the show and of the network. We are big fans of WWT. All right, that's it for the Elon segment. And I think you guys, you you, you made it much more interesting than, than Elon had any, <laughs> any right uh, to be. Um, Meta, I had a caller on the... <laughs> Death spiral, yes. <laughs> is it? You know, that's an interesting question. I mean, their stock is gone. Their stock has gone down so low now that they are not, in fact, have to worry about EU regulations anymore because their their market cap is so low. Uh, well, yeah, but they're shedding staff left, right, and center because people, people are, are realizing their share. Yeah. yeah, their share options are going to be worth nothing in you know when vesting time comes, and they're still having to pay tax on them. So they're losing a lot of key staff at the moment. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to buy that. Right I'm center. not going to buy that Facebook, and I won't say Meta. I'll say Facebook because that's what we're really talking. About. I'm not going to buy the Facebook's going to go away until there is a replacement for it. Right? People, even people who hate Facebook, which is almost everybody, mm -hmm. still need. That's the one place. But there's there sort of is. It's just over time, and it's called TikTok. And like, look, yeah. let's be clear. Like, Meta's not going away anytime soon. Instagram is still wildly popular. WhatsApp is still wildly Oh, but popular. they're doing the best they can to ruin Instagram. You have to agree. Mm -hmm. it's they're, they're trying the best. They're trying the best they can to compete with TikTok. To turn it into TikTok. But turning it into TikTok isn't what the users want. No. You saw the rebellion from no. the Kardashians. Even the go freaking back the Kar Kardashians. Kardashians. So I mean, they're actively ruining one of their best properties. They don't. It's um, it's kind of. Well, stunning. I think. I think that I don't, I'm not sure about ruining their flailing about. I mean, we've always we've always seen this thing with social networks going right the way back to Friendster and before. You get this sort of you sharp uptake, and then there's a long tail, and then the next generation goes, that's boring. That's the stuff my, the older generation uses. Let's try something new. And in the past, Facebook was able to buy up Instagram and you know various comp you know, competitive pro uh, competing uh, products, but it can't do that anymore. And yeah, I, I agree with Ben. I think TikTok is the next thing, and TikTok will be taken over by something else eventually. It's it's the ecosystem, the the competitive ecosystem. These products have to work in. Let's ask a young person. When? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not that young. Oh come on, I'm You're younger 40 than us. Oh, that's I'm turning awesome. 40 in January. Oh, you're going to turn 40 in January. Well, okay. Yeah, so I'm have, the young end. You have a, <laughs> yeah, it turns out Ben's the kid. So uh, you have one, a few more months of youngness. Uh, <laughs> of oh, youth. Um, of youth. excuse oh, me. No. You know, you almost, I went clubbing to, I went clubbing to, you know. For, We're going you know, all day and a half hours now. of hard take Oh, my goodness. Sake, but you, you, so you're very active on uh, Instagram, as we talked about earlier. In fact, you post videos. But yeah. uh, I mean, when I, I, I started Instagram and the day it, it started, it was a great place for me to post photos. I really liked that idea of sharing photos with friends, family, and eventually my larger uh, social network. It's not that so much anymore. Do you still feel like Instagram fulfills you? I think, but I think they're going to change my opinion of it pretty soon. Like I, I, I keep, yeah, and, and that's kind of like Ian said, like they're flailing. The kind of introduction of Reels was pretty ham-fisted and a little bit confusing them adding more ads to make my explore you know like the explore tab and like the feeds even they're more they're putting confusing. more it's ads just, in isn't that amazing they're putting more ads oh and also God. in places that you you know i i kind of uh, to be actually to be perfectly frank i am actually a sucker for instagram ads i'm a very oh. Oh. Good Instagram customer, oh, actually. Oh, God, yes. Regard. it's They're too good. Yes. yes. They're too good. Especially in the when you're going through stories, and I'm just like, oh, what is that? That's really awesome. Uh -huh. Or through your home feed. That's amazing. But I think they're starting to push it. I think that the ads within uh, the profile feed, which is when you click through to an individual you know, user's uh, feed, and not the grid, but when you actually are kind of like having a feed of individual users, throwing ads in there is absolutely ridiculous. That's kind of uh, a little bit experience breaking to me and a little bit confusing. You never want to confuse users. And I sure as hell been confused as F uh, quite recently. And then also, I think, I don't know if this is like, a, is that the Instagram stories where they're adding the, what is it, the loop, the end of loop or the loop? They're adding some kind of um, functionality to add looping ads. Po at the they're end called, of so we post have, loops. yeah, post loop ads, four to 10 second skippable okay uh, ads and standalone video ads would play after you watch your reel yeah just 
you know, and when the sure ads, it makes sense I from know why they do that. perspective, but for and users, they do that, that because most people don't watch a reel only once. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. You watch it again and again, just like on TikTok, you watch again and again. So they mm. figure if we put, because normally a post roll ad is like throwaway because people have seen the video. Why are they going to watch the ad? But because on reels, you watch it again and again. Yeah. So the idea is they're going to stick these four to 10 second ads in between before you can watch it again. Which means to me that maybe people might abandon. And if you're a creator, this might not be a good thing, right? Yeah. And there's just, you know, with TikTok, you have like a better alternative as a creator to going viral really quickly to an audience yeah. you don't have access to. And that really matters. And uh, I'm, you know, with the Octane side of my life, we work with a lot of people, a lot of brands that do TikTok ads. And they're really do sophisticated. Do they work as well as Instagram ads? If you do it right, they can work incredibly well for incredibly cheap yeah. because there's still lots of time for arbitrage because it's still not figured out by a lot of people. But if you right. could like really nail the storytelling format, it's always good of to get on the next platform before it gets big. Mm -hmm. Before it gets expensive. Yeah, before it gets expensive. Yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, yes, Instagram ads work, but they work because they're part of the scroll in the feed and they like another post and they're very clever because they don't put ad until the bottom of the post so before you know it you're looking at it as if it's a post from your friends or family um and i don't know they also much better than i well i haven't used facebook but in a long time but i think they're much better than facebook ads in targeting you right when because they seem to know oh, exactly yeah. what i want to buy it for in the morning I don't oh know how oh it is that. creepy it's it creepy. is really creepy. It's creepy yeah. how how well Instagram knows me, but I yeah. think that there that it's a limit because they're in places where they're kind of acceptable, right? Where there's like a feed where, as you said, like I might think, oh, is this like a post from this other creator that I'm right. like, oh no, this is very adjacent content. It makes sense. I get sucked in. Oh shoot, I'm following this person now and I'm buying their things in the Instagram shop. That's fantastic. Or it's in stories where kind of by nature of it, you're kind of flipping through things and like waiting for something to catch your attention. And that's actually, I think a very decent spot for the ads because especially if they are done well, they really do catch attention and they feel not obtrusive because of their skippability. I, I, I don't know why. I mean, I, I understand why that they're trying to offload some of the lost revenue from Facebook onto Instagram, but I just feel like it's, it's kind of like a lot of different things, I think, especially again with large companies with a lot of products in order to kind of counterbalance products that aren't going well, they try to leverage the products that are still doing half well. And, you know, instead of like really leveraging it, well, there's more just like putting an anchor on it and like letting it slowly sink to the bottom. Uh, slowly yeah. but surely. So yeah, I don't see myself. I mean, as much as I love Instagram and I've, I've personally, without getting too fluffy about it, have gotten a lot of benefit out of Instagram, like creators, like fitness, makeup, all that kind of stuff. And of course, again, wildly susceptible to Instagram ads. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't think this is the way to go to offset. And I think that, you know, trying to catch up and trying to play follow along with TikTok and you know, whatever social network comes up is a losing proposition. It's just kind of, you know, they're on the Titanic and they're just kind of like got a little bucket and they're just like kind of like kind of uh, what's, what's the word for when you like bail out? They're just like bailing out the Titanic, you know, with about three dozen people on their little Instagram ads. Like saying, hey, okay, folks, I was like, come on, come on, come on. That is come so on. visual. Loop, loop, loop. Yeah. yeah, but no, it's great. It's The water's uh, going higher and higher. <laughs> Bail faster. Like, come on, loop, loop. More loop ads. Loop, loop. loop. That's what the loop's for. Yeah, the, 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 the boat is sunk. Ads. Let's go to the metaverse. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. So, Where the boat I mean, is it, above water. It sounds like, Ben, you pay attention to this space pretty closely as part of, part of your business. So if you were advising somebody to buy ads these days, is are you telling them TikTok? I am definitely. Like, you have to diversify. Um, so last year, uh, Apple released iOS 14.5 and iOS 15. It made it possible for people to opt out of data tracking. That is probably the single most consequential decision to all of online advertising in the history of ever. And any business that is heavily reliant on online advertising, this is like e-commerce brands, this is basically everyone, like it really, really affected them. Like the like conversion rates dropped by 40% while the raw prices skyrocketed. And so now it's a whole different like era of strategy. You have to experiment with new things. And, you know, we've seen that the companies that are experimenting with TikTok ads and 
uh, using that to bring new like people traffic are doing really well. But it's not this exact same. You can't use the same stuff you used in Instagram and bring it to TikTok. TikTok is just a different kind of uh, storytelling and you have to warm them up a little bit more to buy than say Instagram. I feel like in Instagram, they are more ready to buy uh, just by the nature of the thing. In TikTok, they're less ready to buy, but you can really get them there. You just have to really follow the format. And like, I've seen people develop these like super detailed sheets on how to do TikTok ads and they follow those to the letter and those work. Uh, it's a crazy Lyle West, in other words, for everything right now. This is why you're seeing just huge stock drops with Meta, huge stock drops with Snapchat and everything else. And you're seeing like some uh, some social networks have to be the beneficiary of even that turmoil. And a TikTok is a beneficiary of that turmoil because that's where audience is. I vote we stop calling them social networks. I think one of the things that's happening is the old idea of, uh, oh, it's a network of your friends, your family, it's a social network, is giving way to, oh, we're just watching TV. They're creator networks. YouTube proved this, right? People aren't going to YouTube to keep up with friends and family. They're there to watch content. People go to TikTok to watch content. So Meta, which, you know, Instagram used to be a social network. Facebook did too. Both are moving more towards that creator s space where it's content you watch and you get engaged with. Isn't that w what's going on, really? Is it socials dying? I don't know. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I, uh, you, you disagree, Ian? Well, I mean, I think a lot of social companies are flailing around trying to find something that works. YouTube is is killing off a large, no, a large amount of its user base by overdoing the adverts, just as Instagram is. Uh, TikTok is currently ascendant, but they're worried about what's ne what's coming next. I don't honestly think social will die because people love it too. People much want social, but they're not getting it where they are. So how do they? Wh yeah. Where do where do they go to get it? I mean, I see people on Discord. Aunt's yeah. family, uh, Aunt Pruitt's family uses Slack. That's become their social. No ads. Private, nobody else. Private apps. In there. Private apps. Uh, yeah. iMessage. Yeah. WhatsApp. That's my. That's a core. My a lot of my social networks now. Yeah, why not? And then you don't get ads, you don't get strangers, you don't get uh, messages from the president. You just get <laughs> your family and friends, right? You get well, those I mean, two. Even... My God, Biden's just so still... pushy at times. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's an election season in the U.S. The next uh, the next four weeks are going to be a nightmare. Oh, don't get me. It, seriously, if one thing that could improve my YouTube experience, a I cannot vote in the U.S. button, and I stop getting all these adverts <laughs> about proposition this and proposition that. Is there a anyway, button? Sorry, oh, we need a button like there, that. Oh, there God, is if a there button. Was, it's, called would... YouTube. it's called YouTube Premium. Pay 12 bucks a month. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, Ooh. I pay for it. I haven't seen an ad in three years. Oh, that's same. all I'll and say. Then really? And then you go to someone's house who doesn't have YouTube Premium. I was like, "What's with all the ads, man?" Just like <laughs> <laughs> you're so right. It, it's actually funny because um, just two days ago, Signal added Stories to their beta. So to yeah. your point, I know. what about is that all with, about? What are, why actually, are they, What is that? I was doing show prep, and my husband and I were eating like lunch, and I look over and I'm like, "Dude, do you have Stories at the bottom of your Signal?" Because he's in the beta, and it's. I, I mean, to your point though, I I think that's. I, I mean, it, it's kind of silly, right? The idea that oh my gosh, now everybody's doing Stories because Twitter added it with their. I forgot what they called their version of Stories, of course. So. It's kind of interesting, though, that maybe that is kind of a sense of where it's going, because maybe like the, because our social networks have become so much more for better, for worse, probably for worse, that people want that connection with their friends and family, that kind of old, like intimate, like, you know, sharing stuff like that Facebook used to be that that all these other networks used to be. And maybe like the private chat apps are going to pick it up because, yeah, now I'm like, oh, well, I can share all my ridiculous like workout videos with my family now on Signal. Do you think that's why like Signal's doing it. that? I feel like I don't I don't honestly know. It's <laughs> I think bizarre. It's kind of silly, but yeah, it's it's, it's, a, uh, it's a weird move. Yeah. So it was a really weird flex for Signal because they were all about under Moxie. They were all about, you know, let's keep it pure. Let's keep it simple. And now Moxie's gone. Maybe this is I know. But what happens, I, I like right? I like the team that's gone in after him. I just don't quite know what they're doing with this one. Yeah. I'm not going to be posting a, a signal story probably anytime soon. Probably I'm going to post one tonight. Let's be honest. Do people um, do that, do group messaging? And I always think of signal as one-to-one -one private messaging, but I guess you could do a family yeah. signal. I guess you could. Mm -hmm. Does your husband yeah, do like, Yeah. Or crypto we, we groups. Like crypto. That too? Yeah. 
crypto. But yeah, we we have a family. We have a couple of different family signal groups because we in, in the oh no, Google Hangouts is going away drama. We kind of all of the tech savvy among us were kind of like I guess auditioning uh, different <laughs> uh, <laughs> chat alternatives, and I think we Slack came up and anything like that. But I think finally everyone on, settled on Signal. So I actually don't mind because I think it's interesting that a lot of my family and I don't know what that says about my particular bubble or, you know, like demographic or whatever, but that, you know, a lot of my family just completely avoid probably for the best Twitter and Instagram and all the right. social media, but we have signal. So it, I don't know. I might actually post a workout, workout story to signal and mm. see, you know, if my fam appreciates it. I don't, I, I don't know. It could just, then no one will ever say anything. I'll just embarrassingly stop. Posting. I wish I could get my family and friends to use any single platform. But I just yeah. can't, you know, I mean, they're my, just, you know, it's all Apple messages or Android messages. Uh, no, my, so nice. my family have do do WhatsApp groups and I refuse to use WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Yeah. I've tried to get them on Signal, but, you know, what can you do? So, I even use Telegram. I don't care. I just want if we can oh, all just agree. Shame. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> well, Telegram's all right. I mean, We're all just going to message on Truth Social. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you on Truth or that new or that new dating app that the that oh that, that was app. that, that there, advert was is there hilarious. an incel dating app? <laughs> yeah, what is uh, it called? Everyone, that's like uh, a I, the, I, is it, it the right stuff? I think the right stuff. Yeah. The, oh yeah. my goodness. The the it, advert is just hilarious. It's kind of like. Wow, this looks like a lot of really uncomfortable first dates. You know. What I mean? <laughs> Oh, I and get it. Questions, right, right is in right wing. Yeah. yeah. And the questions they ask oh. you uh, on oh, yes. uh, signing up are like, crazy. Like, I want January a man who behaves like is... an alpha male. Here, I'm gonna, I want a man I'm gonna who play... knows how to treat a woman. I don't know if this is. Oh, oh this is. Yeah. This Should is I play one. this? Do... <laughs> it's painful, but go for this it. This is <laughs> their uh, This is their promotional <laughs> ad. Uh, make sure my uh, volume. This is, is up what here. they want. This is oh. this, this is the promotional ad for playing right into their hands. <laughs> I'm giving them a little it's extra. Fine. Don't take it. Don't take it down. We're not making fun of you. Oh, why is she not talking? I'm so excited oh, to announce. Is. Let's start over again. Here we go. Hey guys, I'm hey, Ryan. Wait a minute. First I've of all, hey guys, really? Okay. Hi Ryan. Well, Ryan McEnany. The, the sex the sex imbalance in this app is going to make Ashley Madison look good. You By the way, <laughs> I just want to point out this is a carefully chosen. She's wearing a cross. That's very important. So let's tell you about something. I am so excited. Is to she announce famous? Ryan Mac is she related to the other Macanini? Uh, in her, she's a digital marketing and brand communications strategist, former oh, Gators TF athlete. I don't know anything about the uh, Ecclesiastes three eleven. So there. You All go. of us conservatives. It's and called the right stuff, and it's launching this September. What I love most about it is that it's invite only, so not just anyone can join. None of your First, libtard friends can join. Okay. Call, oh, they they use. make that ex you know, very clear. Is it? In the later and on. they still yeah. get in. Yeah, but you're not not if you're not a. And for my ladies, you'll never have to pay because we all get premium subscriptions for simply inviting a couple friends. Gentlemen, if you want access to premium, that's on you. And by the way, only <laughs> my gosh, ladies what and gentlemen, the right stuff is Are you all serious? about getting into the right dating pool. With oh, people it gets who share worse. the same values and beliefs as you. You'll start off by building your perfect profile. No pronouns necessary. Oh we want you God. to put your best foot forward, which includes your favorite photos of yourself doing what you love or being oh, with the there people she's you posing love. with the Our president the opportunity on the golf to course. Let people know various sides of you. So remember, be authentic and creative. We're sorry that you've had to endure years of bad dates and wasted time with people that don't see the world our way. With libtards. Right okay, once you're in the app, you have the ability to scroll through profiles of people in your area. But you can also adjust the settings to see anyone, anywhere. Okay. Once you've liked a couple people, you're ready to post a date. You can either keep your options open. Well, this open makes sense, right? I mean, it's like any other affinity group. You want to hang with the people. I mean, this... I mean, the the, the well, difference I mean, the difference is that the FBI uh, you has been using it to find January six no. uh, insurrections. Is that true? Oh, there were there was reviews even some review with someone, and I don't it could be lies, what? but like there's been rumors, yeah, that the FBI has been uh, oh boy uh, found some people. Insurrections. There is literally a question. Finally, that there's says, an app for us. 
Are you a proud boy? Well, I'm a proud girl. <laughs> and and let's get together. Wow. All right. I don't want to play any more of this, uh, but there you go. Um, uh, ladies, if you like to be commoditized in the right <laughs> stuff, yes. what, is it, what is this thing called again? If you wear plus-sized khakis Who and cares? have a neck beard, we've got a gal for you. Uh, wow. It, it's actually, uh, that's Kaylee McEnany's sister. So there yeah. you go. She has her. Well, you know, she's got street another, cred. It's another grifter on the. You know, I'm sure they got paid very well for doing yeah. it, and no one will use it, and it'll die after a year. Yeah. So you know, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, odd, oddly, no one has done like an antifa an antifa dating th app. Yeah, we the, need an antifa dating, dating app. Or whatever. <laughs> Dang it! I mean, eHarmony, as I understand it, is now mainly a Christian dating site. I, I mean, I can't, I can't complain. I've met my wife you're, on. You're a happily site. married. We don't. Yeah, you and I don't together. know. I've never used any of these Hinge or Tinder or Grinder. Thank God I didn't have to. I got, I, I married somebody before I had to use that kind of thing. De, did you, yeah. uh, Ben? Did you have to use? Did you ever use a, a dating my, app? Deborah and I met through um, a dating app. It was uh, called the League, uh, oh. which was also. Uh, invite only for better for worse, but we met there. And what I made it? Glad. What made you a, a league person? I have no idea what their criteria is, and no one really does. That's kind of the point. Like you don't know what the criteria is. It's probably like, oh, they did some things. Oh, they look interesting. The one thing that is nice about those kind of an app like the league is. If you like start sending like oh, negative things about people. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but we're gonna have to mock you on this. <laughs> are you oh, told my, yes. your standards oh, are too wow. high? Is Goodness. he skateboarding you know, I, in a tuxedo? I was gonna say what? I often skateboard in a tuxedo because I like skate drafts <laughs> an awful lot. It's Keep an invisible skateboard if it is. That's hysterical. <laughs> this is hysterical. I, I will say this, the but you one did positive me, thing is. You if might you, you're if beautiful you, by the way, you your uh, girlfriend or fiance, I think she's your fiance. Maybe I'm should speaking out of school, but uh, is very talented, smart, a playwright, really cool person. So, I think so. yeah, <laughs> so it worked for you. I'm not going to I'm not going to knock this. Um, At least I didn't meet her on the right stuff. <laughs> You had to you had to get an invite though to get into this one, huh? This is good. You had to this get an invite, but it also means that you, if you like, start like sending unsolicited. Yeah, things, yeah, they'll kick you. You're right kicked out. off immediately. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. I actually met my wife through poor web interface design. Uh, <laughs> on the particular dating site, they had a thing. No, no, ser quite seriously. You know, they had a thing that's like, um, if you want to know more about this person's you know, views on this topic, click here. So I clicked it. It's like a message has been sent. It's like, no, no, I didn't want to send her a message. I just wanted to find Whoops. out what she was Whoops. like on that one. Oh. But she sent me a message back saying, why don't we just chat instead? And nice. yeah, the rest is history 14 years later. That's great. How did oh, you meet we, uh, how did you meet your husband uh, when um so there's gonna be a lot of context, but my husband was actually my one hundredth Twitter follower. Uh, there's a lot oh, more wow. context around. Is that, a lot more context is that though? But that was your first but, connection. No, well, to be fair, no. So that that's that's the funny way of telling the story. But actually, I met his a coworker of his at like oh, a, okay. a, a developer conference. My husband is also an Android developer. Um, we're very fun at parties. Um, and <laughs> actually, that's the corner I'm going to to hang out. To be honest with you, yeah. Um, um, yeah, at the time I was doing like uh, a lot of developers, you know, write technical articles explaining how to do things, explaining oh, different me. aspects of development. And so at the time I had a blog and I knew all four people that that read it. And then all of a sudden I get like a hit from uh, my mother-in-law's house in Minnesota. Like, I I know in Minnesota. Well, who would read my blog? And anyway, it turned out it was my husband. Like Aww. his his coworker thought that I was a great match for him. Perfect. And here we are. Like That's a good way later. to meet somebody so, as a setup. Yeah. Like somebody who knows you well. And yeah, says, oh, I know this other person. people. The yeah, old fashioned way. Yeah, the old, the old yeah fashion. absolutely. Old fashioned. Although at the yeah. time when we said we met through Twitter and then we played games on, so we played, we ended up playing Left 4 Dead on Steam together and then we ended up Skyping. <laughs> How so romantic. At the time, wow. well, 14 years ago, that was pretty freaking nerdy. Yeah. You know what I mean? We never, really, yeah. we never really disclosed that. We're like, oh, we met through work. Are you excited about the like uh, Last of Us movie? I am. I actually didn't really play the whole thing through. Neither did my husband, but I, I am excited. I am a big. It looks um, pretty faithful to it, actually. Uh, yeah, it does for sure. Oh, I'm blanking on. Oh, name. Playing Joel. Can I playing Joel. 
Sorry, no I mind. know we talk about it, it. Looks like great casting is like the thing yeah. for that movie. Different video games. Mario thoughts. Chris, uh, is it Chris Pine who's playing the Chris Pratt? Pratt. 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 Okay, is he at least pretending to have an Italian accent? Teen, see as tiny as you can sort of hear. The Bowser voice by Jack Black is incredible. That, well, uh, Jack that, Black mm. could do anything. He should be. It Bowser. does not sound like Jack Black. That's it perfect sounds casting, incredible. actually. He should be Bowser. So we were actually talking about this yesterday, and I think my husband made a really good point: is that you, it, it's it's a really ten, it's a really difficult thing to do the Mario voice. Because hey, it's, it's me, Mario. And, <laughs> so you, right, exactly. So either Chris Pratt is doing that voice. And, you know, being a bit of offensive to, you know, Italian American folks. It's true. Well, it would be a, it would be a stereotype. And people don't. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then, you know, there's no fidelity there. So honestly, he cannot win. Yeah. So I will I will probably watch and 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 just try to like not judge Chris Pratt either way, because honestly, that's a no win situation for him. You're right. So. You're you right. see, I'm it a big gorgeous. I think Bob, I think Bob Hoskins should do it, you know, as the <gasps> original Mario from <laughs> yes. the film. Yes. I think Bob Hoskins is, is is a dead cert for this. Plus, as I recently found out, he hated the film so much he was drunk in most of the scenes. <laughs> Boy, does I mean, that show. <laughs> he had to wear the plumber outfit, which was so funny. To his, see Bob he, Hoskins. his son is still ashamed yeah. of him for doing yeah. that. If, yeah. if anyone out there has never seen the original Mario Brothers movie with the like LSD-looking uh, Koopas and uh, mm. Toads, oh, yeah. uh, go go watch that thing. Make sure that you are in some illicit substance to really enjoy that thing <laughs> and have a blast of how bad it is because, my God, it's so bad it's good. This actually, it, I'm looking at the trailer for the new Mario movie, and it really is kind of stunning. Gorgeous. Yeah. It's it's Illumination. It's it's gorgeous. That's the company, Illumination. They do good stuff. Yeah. Oh, like the, yeah that the is some nice rendering. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm not playing the sound because I don't want us taken down. But uh, oh, is that the Angry Birds? Are they in this it's, too? No, oh it's, my gosh! It's, it's I think the Surely penguins not. from Super Mario 64. You know, from like the Super Mario 64 game. Like, oh yeah, look. Oh. <laughs> All right, we shouldn't. I, I can, we shouldn't do this to people. They're 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 jealous of uh, us. Uh, okay. Why don't we stop creating new movies and just. Start rebooting old ones. I'm just the wrong generation. I never played now. Mario and, because I'm too old. And uh, so it is, I have nothing. There's no reference at all to this for me. It just seems psychedelic. Um, I do think Anna Ta Anya Taylor-Joy as Princess Peach is probably pretty good casting. Yeah, perfect. That's kind of perfect. I'm honestly. thinking. I'm yeah. just saying. Mm -hmm. uh, a little tiny break and we'll have more with our wonderful cast Wintu Dow, who is a regular on AAA, as you call it, all about Android. She's also now a lead developer at Adobe, working on an Android version of an Adobe app, which sounds really cool and fun. How many hours a day do you program? Do you code? Oh, geez. A lot. Uh, a lot. Um, I mean, obviously, at our job, and then a lot of us, I, I mean, I think, especially those of us in the app world, still like code for fun. Um, wow. And so That's I, cool. yeah, yeah. On the weekends and stuff, I think, I think especially being in the Android, like iOS space, I, I did actually iOS develop for like about a year and a half because back then there were no Android jobs and I had to eat uh, and I was a freelancer at the time. Um, we you always, get, you always have, did you have a computer science degree? Did you learn it in school? I did. Yeah. Um, I actually got a computer engineering degree from the university of Maryland. I actually have a master's in electrical wow. engineering technically. Um, I wanted to make video games and then actually some folks from Firaxis because I went to university of Maryland. And so Firaxis is offices in Hunt Valley, Maryland. And they actually came and gave a talk about game development. And as much as I love games, I kind of thought after, after the presentation I was like, I think I want to play games and not make them. Yeah. That's a hard life. <laughs> Take so, it from me. Um, it can spoil you. <laughs> You know, I became a DJ because I loved music and then I hated music because I had to play yeah. it for work. It spoiled yeah. it for me. Yeah, so, I, I actually visited. I visited the Rex office while they were making Civ 4. And I think I I had I, I just knew a friend that was working QA with them and we went to dinner. And then after dinner, this was like 10 o'clock. All the devs went back to the office. I'm like, oh, okay, that's God, not quite the life that I want. <laughs> um, So, yeah, I I do have a computer engineering degree uh, nominally. It's been a long time, though. Uh, I still don't know what voltage is, really. 
<laughs> you don't need to. I mean, no, How are you just, at soldering, though, or as uh, Ian would call it, soldering? Not that good. Not, so not that good. Um, I did take a, I did take a, a circuits class, but it was all plug and play. You know, like the nice old like Radio Shack boards with like the breadboards and everything. And there was no soldering left. I involved. I do have a soldering kit, and I feel like in order to kind of bring myself up to the level of my, um, you know, professional colleagues, I do need to solder at some point. Yeah, but you need to like. Yet. You need to have like a prof a project to work on, like go like build like bur build a Burning Man like uh, like art car <laughs> using all that skills. I feel there like that's go. how a lot of engineering friends that's we probably know. is that was the recreation, but it can spoil you if you do something you love yeah. for a living. It's spoil. There's a, a guy yeah. in the chat room said I used to love drugs and then I became a pharmacist. <laughs> it really, I think, I think it really, it can it can take the fun that's out a good of one. something. <laughs> For you, Ian Thompson is also here from the Register. Ben Parr, I, I, we're going to ask you in a bit about uh, about your new podcast. I can't wait to hear about it. But first, I know you've been wanting to hear about my mattress, so I got to tell you about my Eight Sleep. I love my Eight Sleep. Our sponsor, Eight Sleep, makes both mattresses and covers. So if you have a mattress you love, we did. We got the Pod uh, Two Pro cover, which goes over your mattress. And does an amazing thing. It turns your bed into an amusement park, in effect. It turns your bed into the most comfortable, cozy, wonderful place in the world. What does the 8 Sleep do that's different? Well, it both heats and cools. Okay, you ready for that? It heats and cools. It goes down as low as 55 degrees Fahrenheit. That's cool enough on a hot, hot summer night when you're sweating, you go to, and you just feel, oh, it's refreshing. It's like, oh, I feel like I'm going for a dip. In a, it's wonderful. Or as hot on a cold winter night as 110 degrees. Toasty warm. And that's what's so cool about the eight sleep. It senses the temperature in your room. It senses how you're sleeping. And then it adjusts the temperature to make you sleep better. Good sleep is, you know, nature's gentle nurse. It's the ultimate game changer. We all are looking for it. Still more than 30% of Americans struggle with sleep. One of the number one reasons people don't sleep well, they're hot at night. They're sweaty. They got covers. This is so much better. Fall asleep in record time. Wake up refreshed and feeling great. So the way I have it, and everybody's different. In fact, you, you with every eight sleep, you can have two sides to the bed, right? So Lisa likes her bed really nice and toasty warm. I like it, and I think this. I would recommend this. I start in the evening at about uh, ten o'clock when I'm going to bed. It's a little warm, you know. It's a it's a two on the eight sleep dial, and then as I as I get into a deeper and deeper sleep, it goes down. The temperature goes down and starts to cool because that's kind of the natural way your body goes into deep sleep. And getting more of that critical deep sleep is so vital. Eight sleep offers the only sleep technology that dynamically cools and heats each side of the bed to maintain the optimal sleeping temperature for you and your body. And then in the morning, my, my bed warms up again to, and wakes me up. They even have a little vibration alarm you can use, but I don't even need that because it warms up and I'm feeling good. I'm toasty and roasty. And I jump out of bed going, wow, that was a great night's sleep. Clinical data shows eight sleep users experience up to 19% increase in recovery, up to 32% improvement in sleep quality, up to 34% more deep sleep. Those restorative deep sleep stages, 34% more deep sleep. That's vital for physical recovery, hormone regulation, mental clarity. They just launched, and I think we got to get it. We have the Pod 2 cover. They launched the next generation, the new Pod 3, which has double the amount of sensors, so even more accurate sleep and health tracking. You wake up in the morning, and this bed is adjusting to you. The sleep doctor will actually automatically adjust. It's not magic, but it sure feels like it. It really has made a difference in my life. We've had ours almost a year now. So we've been through winter and summer. And I can tell you, it's just great. And I'm excited as, as the temperatures start to cool off. We're going to sleep so cozy this fall. You can too. 8sleep.com slash twit. E-I-G-H-T. Spell it out. 8sleep.com slash twit. Sleep cozy this fall. Save $150 at checkout on the pod. Eight Sleep currently ships within the U.S., Canada, the U.K., and select countries in the EU and Australia. EightSleep.com slash twit. You go there, you get $150 off at checkout on your new pod. I think you're going to love it. It's, it's transformed our experience 
of, uh, of sleep. Kevin Rose told me about it and was just raving about it on a, on a Twit episode. And he was on with Amy Webb and then she got it and then she's been raving about it. So I had, you know, when your friends get it, I had to get it. And I am so happy we did. And Lisa loves it too. 8sleep.com slash Twit. We thank them so much for their support. Uh, for this week in tech. So you may be wondering, you were mentioning how you're hearing from uh, President Biden a lot, Ian. <laughs> you may be wondering, did, I, you know, a couple of years ago, didn't the FCC announce stir and shaken and you weren't going to get as many robocalls and you weren't going to get <laughs> as many... <laughs> I'm well, sorry. You weren't going to get as many text solicitations. Honestly, my 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 aged grandmother has more teeth than U.S. regulators. I, I mean, it's just it's <laughs> pathetic. Well, they've heard from you, Ian, and they say, "Oh, okay, we're going to finally crack down." Yeah, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it's it. It's been actually, it's been hard. They don't have, you know, there is a missing commissioner. The Senate has blocked. Uh, President Biden's choice for the final FCC mm -hmm. commissioner. So they don't have uh, a majority, a Democratic majority on there. The The chairman of the FCC, Jessica Rosenworcel, is great. She was a commissioner for a long time. She's chair uh, since yep. uh, Biden got uh, uh, inaugurated and has been, I think, very good. But it's been hard to, to, to get this solved. Finally... The FCC says they are so the whole. Let me explain how this works. Stir and shaken are authentication techniques. Uh, stir is used on on one side. I think the receiving side and shaken is used on the sending side. And hand in hand, it means that a phone company, your carrier, for instance, can authenticate that a phone call is coming from the actual person who's placing the call and from a real number, not a number spoofing your your area code and your exchange, not a spoof call. Uh, and that by itself, if you just said, for instance, I only want to accept authenticated calls, or your carrier said we'll only accept authenticated calls, would handle it. Because, of course, you know, it, with the exception of political and, they, you know, free speech, First Amendment, they can't stop the political calls. But all the other calls they can bar. Uh, but the telcos don't want to bar they this don't, stuff. A, they make they don't too want much them. money out of robocalls yep. in the first place. So they've been actively fighting against this. That's right. And you know they got lots of money to spend on Congress. Oh, yeah. And Congress is easily bought for apparently <laughs> should be low, um, low sums. They're, they're cheap. Sorry, sorry. <sighs> Get yourself bought. a Campaign Congress member. Campaign contributions. Yes. <laughs> Get yourself a Congress member this Christmas. They're cheap. It's a great gift for everybody. It's an amazing country. You've legalized <laughs> bribery and called it campaign yeah. contributions. Yeah. It's just mm. insane. So the law was supposed to go into effect end of June. It did not. But that there were, so there's two stages. Next year, the second stage. The first stage was uh, if you don't have a facility, if you're a tele telecom company without a building, by the end of June, you were supposed to be, no, you got to do stir and shaken. That, that hasn't happened. Next year, if even if you have a, a building, you got to do it, you know? Uh, the uh, FCC says, at least today, that they're going to ban seven companies. They've received their final... <laughs> this is your final warning. <laughs> you are on double secret probation, mister. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is your final warning. Um... Yeah, we'll, we'll we're gonna slap you on the back of the hand one more time. We'll see. Well, I mean, this is it. it. It was it was kind of like the ruling with Google um, and its location data fine, like eighty five yeah. million this week. They got fined, and this was town. I got the press release. It's like this is a historic win, and then actually went through the last financial data. That's eleven hours profit for them. You know, yeah. this mm. is an administrative cost, and much yeah. said the same in Congress. There is no. You should start shifting to charging people on revenue not profit and then you'd start to see some really big changes because until these financial you know things bite we're not going to get anything better and robocalls is the perfect example we've been talking about this i've been writing about this for six years now and nothing gets done because there's money to be made <sighs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just a cynic, I, but, you know. <laughs> I, 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 I will just leave it at I was an intern for Congress in the very beginning of, like, when I was in college. And 75% of the time, my congressman was in the outside office 
to where they can, are allowed to do phone calls to raise money. And all he was doing was raising money because he had to. And what that taught me was I did not want to run for Congress. That's right. A giant yes. pile of money. In fact, you get into Congress and you still have to make these calls. You have uh, fundraising yeah. calls every week. It's it's a non it's a never ending process, and we. Uh, this is why you need public funding of elections. Well, over here. we got to because do otherwise, you know, these people aren't giving money to politicians out of the goodness of their hearts or in free speech. They want something for it. So just publicly fund it, massively scale back your election campaigns, and if you can't be bothered to read your company's prospectus, well, then that's your lookout. Well, you, you're, you're giving some reasonable solutions. That's not how we do things here. Well, here's the problem. The people who are elected in this broken system are the people who are going to decide if we stop it. Well, that's not going to work. They're the ones benefiting from it. That's the problem. Not to mention the Supreme Court with their Citizens United case said, oh, oh and by, by the way, uh, corporations are people too. So just come on in. And spend well, that the, money. There are people on the good stuff. They're not people on the bad stuff, like going to prison or being held accountable for crimes or anything like that. But, you know, on when it comes to the central tax and revenue raise, raising purposes, oh, yeah, they're people. Oh, they're people yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, watch and see if you get fewer robocalls. This is a bad time because it's political season. You'll be getting calls from the president <laughs> every day <laughs> for the next 30 days. Are you getting a lot of them, Ian? Because I haven't... But maybe I just because I'm, I'm getting a lot of political adverts on YouTube. Yeah, um, yeah. That is getting absolutely spammed out. I'm getting a fair amount on Twitter. I've had some robocalls. Um, as ever with the robocall thing, the first thing you do when it clicks in is say, are you a robot? And they've actually got quite smart about that. It's like, I'm not a robot. I just wanted to tell you it's like <laughs> two, plus, two plus two. And you're like. I How dare like, you want to tell you about robot. your warranty of your car insurance? <laughs> but I haven't gotten one of those in a while. Now, maybe that's because I now have enough protections on my device. I, Do you still get I those? Get, I get tax. I, I, I get tax. They've gone Lots to tax. Of tax. I get yeah. That's, I don't know how, but like I get texts from, I, I mean, if you cannot tell, I, 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 I did not sign up for uh, any Trump related text messaging blast, and someone hated me enough to put oh, me on the line. Oh, that's a mean thing. thing to do. <laughs> oh. oh. I got a, a, an unsanitized phone number a couple of years ago. Um, you know, it was a phone number somebody else had used, <laughs> and he kept getting texts like, You got to pay your student loan, dude. You can't. <laughs> and, <laughs> and at the same time, you're the number one mega fan. And for just another $50, you too can meet with the president. And it was, it was mind boggling the, the, how active this guy was receiving 20 or 30 text messages from Republican mm -hmm. candidates a day. Obviously he'd, he'd given money uh, once they bite into that. Uh, but the thing is you can't stop that because that's political. And so the first amendment protects that. And so, no matter what we do, no matter what the FCC does, you're still going to get robocalls from political candidates and solicitations <laughs> from political candidates and parties. However, you shouldn't be <laughs> soon. <laughs> you shouldn't be getting any more car warranty robocalls or IRS robocalls. Um, <laughs> and one day I'll have a unicorn which urinates <laughs> pure real ale and <laughs> Swedish chocolate. You know, at least it's the right like, color. Yeah, I hope. Just it. to be Is clear. <laughs> I, I don't know if I, I if you found a unicorn and you got its ale from this and you told me to drink it, I don't think I could do it. Oh, uh, sorry. This from the nation that gave us Budweiser? You know, I mean, it's like, that is I love in a canoe. When no responsibility for Budweiser. Close to water, but no. <laughs> Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we can agree Budweiser is not a good beer. I was I, no, I started no, no, no. talking about Meta because I wanted to warn you that there is a Meta scam out there. In fact, Meta has warned 1 million Facebook users to be careful. There are at least, this is kind of stunning, 400 apps on iOS and Android in the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store that purport to be nice little helpful things like horoscopes and VPNs and photo editors. And really, they they have very few features. All they really do is say, oh, good, now log in with Facebook. 
because we're mm -hmm. all used to that. Log in with Facebook. And of course, you're not really logging in with Facebook. You're logging in with the bad guys who run these apps and they are stealing your user account info. Well, I mean, this is, I think this is why a lot of companies are actually dumping the Facebook login because their security is so lamentably bad and mm. the security awareness of their users is very, very bad. What indeed. benefit, though? Why, what is, why is there a brisk market in stealing Facebook accounts? Explain that to me. I'm spamming, I'm presumably. I mean, basically, it's, it's getting leveraged access to their accounts, selling that data on, and then spamming them out. And yeah, it's not just spamming on the wall. They like, I've had a couple of friends go through it. Someone will take their account and then they will start just DMing all of the yeah. friends and oh, getting yeah, them in celebrity yeah. scams. And that's how. Because I that's trust how, my good friend on Facebook. So it must be safe. Well, no, but I mean, I'm, I'm with you on this, Ben. I've, I've had messages from relatives who quite frankly shouldn't be using a computer at times. Um, but just like, <laughs> hi, I found these photos of you. Click here. And then mm. when you actually message them and say, did you just send me this message? And it's like, what? No, not at all. Oh, no, I've been locked out of my Facebook account. I think Ben's runs. It's it's that, you know, mm -hmm. it's a yeah. trusted party. You push it out. I mean, <sighs> Android doesn't and seem to be hit so hard with this. But Facebook well, it's seems also to the be... Demo it's the demographic. Yeah, Facebook you go is after older. normal people. Yeah. 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 Uh, you had a story on re the register. I'm curious what people are thinking about this. Papa John's Pizza Place. Huh. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I, I, I complain about not writing as much as I used to, but Brandon did an absolute classic job on this. It's like, Papa John's can be accused of many things. A lack of flavor for a start. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, every now and then I will try a I will try an American commercial pizza, and my goodness, they're bad. I mean, <laughs> Papa never John's. ever criticize British food after this. But yeah, Papa John's was using a technique that Intel and various. Others I think have a used. lot of websites do this, though, right? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you have to opt in. You so it's session replay choice. software, which. So of course a website knows you're there. They knows what you they know what you click because the clicks are getting sent back. But this software watches the mouse move, watches what you type in, sends it all back. If for instance you order a pizza, then change your mind, they still get what you typed in as an order. Uh, a lot this of sites was held for months as well and reviewed by analysts. Yeah, uh, and I, I mean, when I don't know if you you've been involved in this, but this is very common in websites to like heat mapping, just to kind of get an idea of where people get lost, what features are working, what features are never seen. It's a normal process, I believe. I, I think about this. So even on mobile, um, for example, whenever you click a button, whenever and and like what screen you click that button, and I guess like what options you pick in a radio group, it's very common to send those events out, uh, and then. So, so it's a spectrum, right? So with the session logging, it's like they have the play-by-play. -play. It's like a continuous amount of information on exactly everything you're doing. And, you know, normally the way I have done it, and I, yes, I have implemented tracking like events. It's pretty common to see like, yeah, hotspots, like what are people clicking? Are people not clicking this new feature? And so it's an interesting spectrum because in regards to what I am used to doing for my job, you know, it takes, you know, someone on the product side or some really smart data person to kind of take you know, these like individual events, like, okay, they click this button and then they click that button, but then, and, and then try to piece that together. Right. It's like, it's, it's more like in that, in that case, there's a lot of different pieces of the puzzle. And then it's kind of like our job to put that puzzle together and try to create like user behavior and patterns out of it. Whereas this is just literally just like, like, like you know, I mean, it's like being able to tell blow for blow what a person is doing. And so it's actually making me question it. It's at what point between the spectrum of we're recording exactly what the user is doing to this kind of more puzzle PC, like, you know, build your own like user adventure, you know, um, style where it becomes unacceptable. You know what I mean? Like, and like, at what point is it really obtrusive? And granted, yeah, like uh, you, people opt in, but it, it, I think it, it's also, you know, user understanding of what they have opted in too. So, yeah, I mean, it's very common and often a very important feedback loop for like developers to know whether a feature, whether a user interface, whether something actually works yeah. and it, like you know, there is it, a difference know. though between collecting stuff that's typed even if it's never posted right yes in fact i've seen companies get in trouble for that it's not at all uncommon if you fill in a web form before you even submit 
that that information, those keystrokes are sent back uh, to the site. And I think that's often considered a violation. In any event, Papa John's is, is being sued uh, for doing it. Um, that doesn't and really not, not for their pizzas. It's just a crime. Game. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one. I, I the... kind of want to hear your tier of pizzas here, Ian. <laughs> oh, are you a, are you a Papa John's fan, Ben? I, I I'm a I have, we have. You know what? I'm a neat. I'm from Chicago. I'm a Chicago. Oh, deep well, dish you've style got Geno's. Oh, oh you, you've no, got that's Uno. not a pizza. That's a tomato pie. No, oh, no, that's that, the best thing oh, in the no, world. That is a kidding? pizza. And look. I can love that and New York style pizza yes. since I also lived in New York and that yes. is like I love both. Everyone can agree that's pizza. They're yeah. both great and they're both pizza. There is go however, to Italy. Go to it. Italy and then demonic. taste proper pizza. There is, however, nothing better than Pepe's New Haven tomato pies. I, I just want to put I that. I can a think word of several things better. Being <laughs> beaten around the face and neck would be um, <laughs> what. <laughs> You, you oh, loser! Man. This is the original pizza parlor, 1925, in the in America. And if it's you've like never a had their, Iraq. you've never had their clam and garlic pizza. This is this is oh. the pizza that lasts for days. You will yeah, you no will taste this it. for the With rest clams, it of lasts for days. No, in your mouth it will last because you will <laughs> taste this for. I know because I ate quite a few of them in college. Uh, great pizza. Oh. Great pizza. My favorite pizza of all time will always I had it in Venice, spinach, egg, and anchovy, and an anchovy, and on a really thin, crispy base. That's, that's good. Just a nice wood oh, fired, oh, wood fired so oven. Good. Yeah, yeah. You, my stomach wanted to take me home and cuddle me all yeah. night. So no. And I bet that Venice Pizzeria <laughs> did not spy on your web visits. Uh, the way Papa John's No, they John's didn't massively does. overcharge us because it's Venice. <laughs> but you know, uh, Papa John's actually the the uh, the. I think it's a class action, or it's intended to be a class they're, action. They're trying for a class yeah, action. They got a guy yeah. in San Diego. But uh, what's interesting is they accuse Papa John of violating the wi violating the wiretap. Yeah, act. that's a great wow. headline. It's fun. And the California Invasion of Privacy Act. Uh, so that well, it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, with this. I think a lot of these uh, class action the suits are just lawyers looking for ways to supplement their income. I mean, I think Ian made a good point where, like, the line is thin and undetermined. Like the crust. In some ways. Yes. <laughs> like, in oh. between, is it like this helpful thing or is it an invasion of privacy? Right. And, uh, you know, two decades, several decades into the internet, we still have no idea where the line is. I we, think if you use well. the yeah. internet, don't you just kind of know that everything you do is being spied upon by multiple parties? But you don't I think don't think it. people do. Honestly, I, I really I this. I think this is the problem. We've got to the stage where the first internet generation who have grown up knowing nothing but the internet trust it by and large, and you know you need that kind of requirement to at least try and tell the truth and try and tell people what the, what you're taking. Are you um, a fan of the cookie consent banner? Uh, I know you hate it, Leo. I know you hate it with a passion that burns like a thousand suns. But I like it. What? I like being able to choose what coffee we well, yeah, I will go through and say, no, you can't have that data. Thank you very much. Uh, and yes, it takes an extra 10 seconds on a web page. But I like it. What can I say? Can someone make my bottom third just be a cookie acceptance like line? That oh, that's a great. good idea. From now on, the lower third should just say, Ben Parr uses cookies. <laughs> Do you oh, accept Ben Parr tracking you? Do you accept him tracking you? Uh, area I mean, so man is arrested for parody. <laughs> this is the first, I mean, this is oh, a sense of humor so coming good. from the New York Times, oh. I have to say. The Onion, so the Supreme Court docket, uh, you know, this is a first Monday in October. The Supreme Court says what cases they're going to be taking. Then they're argued, and then come June, they'll tell us uh, how they feel. So quite a few of them will impact uh, the Internet, Section 230, uh, things like that. But this one, uh, I think, I hope, <laughs> is a no-brainer. Uh, a man was arrested when he put a parody of his local police department on Facebook. Uh, the Parma, Ohio area man spent four days in jail over a Facebook page he oh, created God. that mocked his local police department. He was charged with using a computer to disrupt police functions. <laughs> a jury found him not guilty. Uh, 
And uh, he says his civil rights were violated. He's trying to sue the city for damages. A federal lawsuit, dis a federal judge rather, dismissed the lawsuit earlier this year, saying, I love this one. The police had qualified immunity. That's, of course, the doctrine that lets police shoot you and not have to go to jail. Uh, but apparently they can also arrest you because you embarrassed them and annoyed them. Uh, appeals court upheld the decision. Uh... He, is, he took it to the Supreme Court. They are reviewing his request to take up the matter. And The Onion decided they wanted to get involved. And this is perhaps the, the funniest <laughs> briefing in all of, uh, uh, all of Supreme Court history. Um, have, you, have you guys read this? Uh, oh, the Amicus Curia brief was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it really made me miss, miss the old paper version of the of the onion, but even so, they did us proud. They they uh they uh, they hired somebody uh, to uh, uh probably a lawyer, maybe not, <laughs> to uh, really <laughs> really spend some energy uh on this one. Uh let me uh let me pull up some of the highlights uh from this. They for instance, they call they call the Supreme Court justices Latin wonks. <laughs> <laughs> Their point, we should probably start with their point, which is that parody does not need to announce itself, that it's not even very good parody if you have to say the following is parody. As somebody who works for the register, I think you <laughs> probably uh, agree with uh, with that. We assume that, that you know, um, people read us knowing the where we come from. But, I mean, this is surely, an, I mean, America loves to bill itself with, we're free, we're free, we're so free, we're the land of the free, whatever. But the very idea that criticizing your local police department isn't in any, you know, is unacceptable and should result in four days in jail, that's, that's ridiculous. Argument number one from The Onion, let's not forget. Parody functions by tricking people into thinking that it is real. Tu stultus est. You <laughs> are dumb. These three Latin words have been the Onion's motto and guiding light since it was founded in 1988 as America's <laughs> finest news source. The Onion's motto is central to this brief for two reasons. First, it's Latin. And the <laughs> Onion knows that the federal judiciary is staffed entirely by total Latin dorks. They quote Catullus in the original Latin in chambers. They sweetly whisper starry decisis into their spouse's ears. They mutter qui bono under their breath while picking up after their neighbor's dogs. So the onion knew that unless it pointed to a suitably Latin rallying cry, cry its brief would be operating far outside the court's vernacular. And it goes the, on. It's great. The Brilliant. the lawyers that uh, got to work on this probably had just like the greatest time ever. Yeah. Working on this, and I like look. This one has multiple purposes. Like, uh, so brilliant of the Onion. One, like obviously now it's in the news. Two, it's putting into the news this ridiculous case that would have an impact on it if uh, it created more precedent. And three, it's just hilarious. Just yeah. the entire thing, front to back. Bravo. Like. Lawyers yeah. can write really hilarious stuff when they really want to. I like it. And the onion this reminds is, uh, people that in 2012, they proclaimed King Kim Jong-un was the sexiest man alive. <laughs> and then, in <laughs> fact, the Chinese state-run news agency believed it true and published it along with a slideshow of the dictator himself in all his glory. <laughs> You'd be surprised how often that happens. I wrote an April first. I wrote an April Fool's first parody story for the, uh, not the Reg, my previous employer, and it got picked up by Forbes and run as a legitimate news story. And I put all the clues in there. It was about uh, a computer virus spreading through VCRs, which reset the clock oh to flashing zeros. <laughs> um, and I even included a quote from Doctor April Una. But Forbes ran with it. And this yeah. was back when Forbes was actually quite serious rather than the clickbait <laughs> ratting. Yeah, now it, now it wouldn't mean anything mm. if they ran. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. now. I mean, but this was, you know, 2006. So Point, it still had some I have credibility. To say, points to the New York Times in their story about this uh, brief. They, uh, the headline is Area Man is Arrested for Parody, of course, a parody of the Onion's familiar Area Man headline. So New York Times clearly. <laughs> Knows what Credit to the Onion also for their September the 11th edition because that was just what was needed at the time. Yeah, I'll never mm -hmm. forget that. Just like, A, the headline, but also they had a little piece on the inside. 
best sickie ever, says com- says commercial janitor at World Trade Center. Ooh. It was that kind of, you know, it was what was needed at the time. Yeah, um, I this, they are this was back when it was an actual news, you know, paper you could get in the newsstand. Mm. Yeah, I did a video ad for them once where they just had me talk about an orange bucket as if it was like the most amazing thing ever. They somehow <laughs> convinced a couple of uh, tech influencers to just talk about it was like a, it was an ad for like Home Depot or something. I don't know, but it was a beautiful orange bucket and it just had all the features like it. What, like imagine Steve Jobs talking about a bucket that. Yeah, it has Bluetooth and everything. <laughs> and yes, this it has came, the ultimate protection. This Onion uh, September 11th edition came out. I, I want to point out about three weeks later. So it, you know, this the it was maybe time to start uh, kind of laughing about it. Hugs up seventy six thousand percent. U.S. vows to defeat whoever it is we're at war with. But my favorite was. Uh, hold on, let me. Get oh, yes. hackers, pop up. <laughs> hackers surprised to yeah, find selves in hell. We yes. expected eternal paradise for this, says suicide bombers. <laughs> Not knowing what else to do, woman bakes American flag cake. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I actually, I don't think I read this at the time. I've seen it since. Um, I'm feeling disappointed they didn't do more with the Queen because that was ripe for parody. Yeah. And it would have been just the kind of thing the Onion would have been good at. Yeah. Thank goodness for the Onion. If you can't laugh, you know. You need satire. You, you need, know, so otherwise that's the point. life. Yeah. Life gets nice terribly. Have... Sorry, go on. Oh, go ahead. No, you first. Oh, no, I was just saying uh, we need satire because otherwise life gets terribly depressing. So you've got to have something which puts a smile on your face. But um, yeah. I was going to say it is actually nice to have a proper discussion about First Amendment and what free speech actually means because yes. it mm-hmm. tends to just bubble up quite a bit on your doom scrolling. And I mean, not that I'm a whiz at, you know, civics and, and things like that, but it is nice to see an actual proper fight about First Amendment and the purposes for which that amendment was written and the actual context in which it was needed and in such a delightfully entertaining way. So much plus mm-hmm. on all these things. So. Whenever anybody brings up free speech on Twitter, I just post the XKCD comic number 1357 public service announcement the right to free speech means the government can't arrest you for what you say unless you're in parma ohio i guess it doesn't mean that anyone else (laughs) has to listen to your bs or host you while you share it it doesn't shield you from criticism or consequences if you're yelled at boycott and have your show canceled or get banned from an internet community your free speech rights aren't being violated it's just that the people listening think you're an a-hole and they're showing you the door Always a good comic to have. Just print around. that out for yep. your. <laughs> As usual, first... Randall Monroe has an answer to everything. I love. Oh, that. the internet's court jester is is. I have a, a, a signed Randall Monroe um, print on my wall. Nice. Uh, with, Which one? It's, um, it's. I think it's three eight six. It's someone on the internet is wrong. Oh, I love that. Um, <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, a classic. I, I mean, it's just, a classic. I mean, as a, as a journalist, you have to have that. You know, it's. I saw that, and I was like, "He's not going to do a T-shirt of it." I'm getting a signed print. So, no. As long Cherish as we're that forever. As long as we're doing the register, here's another great story. Uh, Boston Dynamics says, <laughs> oh. "We promise, oh, yes. we will oh, not boy. arm our robots." Uh, We are concerned about recent increases in makeshift efforts by individuals attempting to weaponize commercially available robots. Is that the case, Ian? Are people doing that? Oh, God. Okay, I can't name names on this, but I think Ben (laughs) might know who I'm talking about. Um, There was um, uh, someone I know worked in uh, public relations for an AI company. Uh, As I say, I can't name the exact one, but he was doing media training with their lab staff. And he was like, so let me take the role of a journalist. Uh, If you wanted to, could you build a drone which could autonomously launch its weapons and kill people? And the lab said, oh, yeah, certainly. Just give us the parameters. We can do that. And it's like, no, 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 you don't say that. You say, obviously, that's something which, you know, company people will be looking at, but we would never do it ourselves. That's exactly what Boston Dynamics said. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's just like the whole point of developing the Atlas robot was it was a humanoid, humanoid it's a, it's robot a combat machine. which could drive cars, yeah. use human equipment and the rest of it. Yeah. And you're kind of like, 
uh, we pledge. The military knows what's going on. This is going to happen at some point. Boston yeah. Dynamics, um, which it's makes the very scariest... cute of them to say that we won't do it, but they're going to do it. It really makes you feel better about Elon's incompetent robot <laughs> because oh, it can barely stand. My goodness, it's not going to shoot you. Uh, but near, meanwhile, Boston Dynamics robots are running around doing backflips, opening doors. We pledge, says Boston Dynamics, we will not weaponize our advanced mobility general purpose robots or the software we develop that enables advanced robotics, and we will not support others to do so. When possible, <laughs> we will carefully review our customers. When possible, uh, we will carefully review our oh, customers' no. intended applications to avoid potential weaponization. Ni neither neither other world governments nor the AI uh, nor artificial it's intelligence have agreed to the same thing. Yeah. And I mean, look, like as technology continues to evolve and improve, this technology gets easier for others to replicate and to build on their own. And they definitely will not promise that kind of thing. And this stuff is going to happen and how we deal with it is going to be a bigger issue. You think the same thing about I, I, God, we're going back to politics, but like tactical nukes is like another example of like uh, a thing where like that's hard to stop and that's a thing that exists and it's easier and easier to make things like that uh, as time goes on. And we are entering a society where we just have to like figure out how we live with these things because the well, march doesn't stop. It is happening right now. In fact, Israel set up a, what they called an AI controlled machine gun. Mm. aiming at a checkpoint in uh, Hebron uh, in the West Bank City, the occupied West Bank City, just in case, you know, too many Palestinians uh, showed up at the checkpoint. Uh, it doesn't Good news, doesn't fire uh, lethal uh, rounds, just stun grenades and sponge-tipped bullets. Yeah, and well, uh, if you I, need it, tear gas. And my wife knows someone who was on, in the Palestinian protests, and he took a shotgun, sorry, a tear gas canister to the head, and Not he's now in a wheelchair for the rest yep. of his life. Yeah. Not good. So, and I don't know if I non lethal, non -lethal trust, does not mean. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I don't know if I exactly. trust an AI controlled machine gun. Seems on the face of it a bad idea. Uh, I'm just saying. Um, Kim Kardashian's in trouble. Speaking of the Kardashians. <laughs> in so many ways. In so many ways. She has been charged with the Security and Exchange Commission and has agreed to pay $1.26 million in penalties, disgorgement, and interest. What's disgorgement? She must have had to really rummage, rummage around the back of the sofa to find that. You know, it's just... Seriously. They get... Yeah, it's not so, it's not exactly a fine for a billionaire. She uh, she apparently tweeted uh, to talk about uh, her on her. I'm sorry, it was on her Instagram account about her Emacs tokens, a, crypt, a crypto asset security being offered by Ethereum Max. The post contained a link to Ethereum Max's website, uh, which also provided instructions on how you could buy Emacs tokens. Uh, she did say ad, hashtag ad. She didn't disclose she was paid a quarter of a million dollars for the hashtag ad. And it turns out, and I did not know this, but federal security law requires that any celebrity or other individual who promotes a crypto asset security has to disclose the nature, the source, and the amount of compensation they received. So it's not enough to say hashtag ad. You have to say hashtag I was paid a quarter of a million dollars to plug this bogus investment. Um, wow. So it cost her. Bogus is a terribly strong term, <laughs> legally. <laughs> not, not that I'm suggesting this is complete ether. Oh, I know what the disgorgement is. They explain it. That's the money she got in payment. So she has to give them that plus a million dollar uh, penalty. And she agreed not to promote any crypto asset securities for three years. <laughs> it's kind of a slap on the wrist. I, I mean, I, I, she probably makes more sit, like sitting on a private chat than yeah. she like has to pay if, for if that. If Paris and, Hilton yeah. gets a million dollars a night to be a DJ at a hotel, I gotta, I've seen Paris Hilton DJ, and she is not a DJ. <laughs> DJs <laughs> actually move records and mix music she just on stands stage. There. You stand there and you press a button on a laptop. That's not DJ. Yeah. <laughs> This is such a tragedy of like our common, like our modern society with like influencers uh, and social media yeah, where, I mean, yeah. this is, I mean, the Kardashians every like couple years, they have something, which I think even like say slightly less famous people would have some kind of negative ramifications from like 
like four years ago, they were accused of like stealing designs. And then, of course, the whole fire festival thing with like, you know, like the whole the kind of issues around promotion and disclosing when something is just a promotion. And they just kind of, you know, just like, OK, sure, here, the fine, sure, whatever. That's like my lunch. Move on and do the it kind of like um, this cavalier, like with much cavalierly Cav- with much cav- no, cavalier. Yeah. Yeah, a lot, that, is, a that is a good grammar thing to figure out. Is, like, is, is that an is that an adverb? <laughs> is that an adverb? <laughs> but just willy nilly, just willy nilly doing yeah. you know no, whatever seems like a good idea. I like it. Yeah. Cavalierly is that yeah. right? But you know, it, and 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 it's the and it, it just shows to show you that with enough money, this is not a big thing. And I guess to relate it back to mm. tech, just like with Google and Apple, like the rest of it is kind of like a a slight bother. It is not an actual you know, punitive yeah. measure. It's just like, oh, it's a little slight inconvenience. And this is not going to damage the reputation, Lord knows. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, I agree, agree absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> One, One cavalierly is now the adverb of the week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> second, this is like, it, it is an interesting kind of like introspection into uh, both like the crypto world and like the reckoning in terms of just like people getting scammed and like we have no idea how to like deal and handle with it uh, still. And, you know, the like we could go days. We won't go into days into that one. Uh, but it's also a look into like our influencer culture, because what, 80 percent of uh Kids say the number one job they want to have. Eighty-eight like, percent yes, of kids. Eighty-eight percent. Oh, they want to be influencers, and they and they want to be influencers, and so like you could forgive them. Like, that's what I, I want to be. be. Influencer. Yeah, I want to be given the half a million dollars. I mean, I, I don't want to be the old the old fart on the show, but it used to be if you were going to be a celebrity, you had to be good at something, <laughs> you know, and. You know, you actually had a skill like a sports person or an author or a creator or a coder or a you know, security maven. Just it takes I take skill to pictures there, there, and photos of them. Come it, on. It depends. It depends on the type. Look, we're talking a lot about Kardashians <laughs> because they're an easy punching bag. Yeah. Uh, but mm. like when you think about but like some of the individual. In that, in one case. <laughs> but like you think about some of the individual TikTokers who are like incredible chefs or just mm. amazingly mm-hmm. in-depth in knowledge in science and in physics. Like that's like that is cool. And I like supporting that. Uh, there's other areas where it just doesn't make sense. And the fact that every, everyone can't be an influencer. We need people to build stuff and to run companies and to serve in government and to do everything else that makes society function. It's I, I, cavalierly. Oh. Cavalierly. I said oh, cavalierly. cavalierly. It's cavalierly. 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 Uh, that is a nice word. In a way that shows a lack of care about something important or about the feelings of other people. Cavalierly. That's pretty much the Cardassians, actually, you know, <laughs> in a single word. Kim Cavalierly. That's her new name. I, I want to use a new adverb, caviarly. Caviarly. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit briny, mm. like a you know, like an interesting texture. High um, end and briny, yeah. Leaves a slightly then, sour taste in the mouth, but no. <laughs> I actually do not do uh, NFT and Bitcoin ripoff stories because there's so many of them, and yeah. I just, uh, I just, it's like, oh no, here's another. I kind of want to do this one only because it's so big. Binance. Oh, is it Binance? Yeah. Binance, no, which I mean- is the world's largest crypto exchange, confirmed Thursday's hackers stole 2 million BNB tokens worth $568 million. Oh, my God. That's half, more than half mm. a billion dollars. Blockchain security company Slow Mist. Not a great name, if you if you want my opinion. <laughs> Why? Slow Why? Mist <laughs> says the attackers only managed to take about 110 million because they suspended the BNB chain, and so they you know they could only transfer that many before they got you know they got shut down. How the hell? So is they Binance? only got a hundred million dollars. In this hack. You can ba- you can't you can barely afford a private jet or a yacht with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, all those poor hackers. The hacker I mean, managed- I mean, Go ahead. This is gonna drive you drive you nuts when as when as a as a coder. Mm. Binance is is the biggest cryptocurrency platform in terms of exchange out there, and they were still falling for a basic bridging mistake. How the hell are these companies in operation and not doing due diligence on their code? Basically, Is it just the, move the, fast and break things. The bad or? guy forged forged a uh, a message 
Mm, trick the logic. Touch. Yeah, trick the logic until until thinking of the contract to think the message was valid, even though it wasn't. There were no funds in the account. And the BSC token hub just said, okay, here's your money. Thanks. Have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's I, uh, sorry, I'm going the like, wrong career. <laughs> Pro programmers are people. And this is kind of like the point I always make where things like where, where there's, there's always like this, whenever something new in technology gets open, there's this Pandora's box and you cannot trust developers to put a good lock on that box. I think I kind of talked about this a little bit back in the show when it came to like the Android version of AirTags and things like this is that we're, we're humans. I mean, and you, you're trusting us to write software for self-driving cars. You're trusting us to write, you know, this very, in, you know, complicated cryptographic, you know, uh, and, and blockchain technologies. We're still people. And there's no such thing as bugless code. And it's it's it's, no. it's scary because it's to the degree, to what degree when you make a mistake, is it going to hurt people financially or physically in the in the approach of self-driving cars? And so as and, and like I don't want to talk about the other person that we agreed not to talk about anymore, but it just comes to <laughs> that as as clever just call and him as the smart, prince of darkness. It's okay. The prince of darkness. <laughs> and as clever and as intelligent and as technical as the prince of darkness might be and other other engineers of that make, they're still human beings. And being incredibly smart at one thing does not mean that you're incredibly good at every other thing and every other corollary or ancillary and adjacent thing that goes with it. And we'll make okay. mistakes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Mistakes I, happen. There's so, no such thing as perfect software. But this oh, is not us. the first time these bridges have been attacked. In fact, uh, if so I'm not sure what the bridge does. I I guess it bridges between it's, it's, one blockchain. It's a tran it's it's, and it's a transfer function where okay. you can arbitrage the entire thing. But mm. basically, um, based on the the data we've been getting. This is largely run out of North Korea and and various other stations. What? Yeah. Oh no, this North is Korea is 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 going after cryptocurrency. Oh, the attacks, not the bridges. Oh, you oh no, 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 no. Wow. The actual <laughs> attacks and thefts. Um, a large proportion of this is propping up the North Korean nuclear program, not actually feeding their citizens because they've got plenty of those, but let's get the nukes done instead. Oh, that's not a um, good, that's actually not a good thing. Well, so no, cross, I mean, so according to TechCrunch, cross-chain bridge hacks have become a common occurrence in the past yeah. year. So if you're coding a cross-chain bridge, you might really want to think about getting it right. In June, a hacker exploited a vulnerability to steal $100 million from Harmony's Horizon Bridge. Mm -hmm. In August, attackers drained $190 million worth of crypto from the Nomad cross-chain bridge. And earlier this year, hackers stole $625 million. Following the attack on Axie Infinity's Ronin Bridge. Yep. I mean, Everyone, it's... please don't accidentally fund Kim Jong Un's brutal regime. Thank oh, you. you know what's happening? Thank yeah. you. Crazy. I mean, th I mean, this is it. If you're managing that amount of funds, a certain level of responsibility and, frankly, legal responsibility. I mean, we don't let banks do this. Well, okay, we do let banks do this stuff, but they've got better lobbyists. But, I mean, if if you're a FIDI company and you're getting hacked this easily, you shouldn't be in business. You really shouldn't but because they, this money is not are. going. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's the Wild West and no one wants to be seen to be anti-competitive. But for goodness sake, some basic standards would be nice. A penalty for hey. the former Uber security chief who mm. covered up, Ugh. failed to tell U.S. authorities about a 2016 hack of the company's databases. A jury found Joe Sullivan guilty of obstruction of justice and concealing a felony. Uh... So I guess he'll be sentenced at uh, some later date. He, uh, uh, when the uh, Uber hack happened, uh, he arranged for the hackers to be paid $100,000 in Bitcoin so that they would sign non-disclosure agreements <laughs> so that no one should know of what has happened. And we know how trustworthy Fantastic. those hackers can be. 57 million Uber <laughs> users' records and 600,000 drivers' license numbers were stolen. So ha what's your response? Let's get a non-disclosure from the guys, the hackers. Quick. Uh, the payment was disguised as a bug bounty. Uh, so he has and been... Boy, is Katie Missouri is pissed about that. 
because you know this that kind of invalidates a lot of the bug bounty stuff yeah um, bug bounties are a good thing uh absolutely right. in fact you know uh you can make a pretty good living on bug bounties mm -hmm. if you're a good security well, I mean, in researcher. terms of android developers there's a lot of people making some serious cash on this yeah and better that you get paid by the company or by hacker one than by Zerodium, who's going to give you a million bucks for the bug and then sell it on to the Saudi government. So much, much better that these companies pay these bug bounties, I think. Um, As a journalist, I have to say, pay, not paying the Saudi government to get me to cut up with a bone saw is a pretty good, good thing. Good idea! But, yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty, but, pretty good yeah. idea. But uh, the bug bounties are great on this sort of But I'm, I'm curious, but as, an, uh, as an Android developer... Uh, most people, it's most coders, it seems, when it comes to this sort of thing, would prefer to sell it to the company for a reasonable price rather than go to someone at zero DM. Is that correct? Uh, I would think so. I mean, if we assume that many developers have some sense of um, responsibility and ethics towards consumers and and the people that they're finding bug money for, for sure, um, I would, I would, so let's just be uh, assuming good intentions. Like, I would say yes. But I don't know. It, what's the quote from mm. The Dark Knight? Some people just want to watch the world burn. I, I mean, I really don't <laughs> yes. know. I, I, I really do feel like there is a good legitimate business for bug bounties and, and, and for developers, especially that are security experts. But uh, I mean, people are weird, man. Uh, and I, I, I do. I mean, this kind of reminds me Uber's just having not a very good year uh, for security between this no. and then mm. the social engineering uh, attack either but you know i i don't know i mean i've never personally i'm not that is not my forte i've never really participated in any bug bounties but i, I can't help but so especially for repeat business and also kind of like for a longevity of career for bug bounties you would want to be more of a legitimate um actor but i don't know there's uh, actually a, saying, don't trust us a fascinating <laughs> story we talked about on tuesday with security now uh there was a, a, a pretty severe uh poisoning attack uh, on the oh. Akamai CDN, uh, and the uh, white hat hacker Jacopo uh, Tediosi, who found it, didn't you know gave the bug to Akamai and hoped for a payout, right? Hoped for a bug bounty. Akamai uh, sent him a, a, a greeting card and a thank you, but no money. So, <laughs> so uh, it turns out there was a mitigation. So they went to Akamai's customers. And gave them the mitigation. They ended up making fifty thousand dollars in in bug bounty because the companies were so grateful. Not Akamai, Akamai, uh, Akamai didn't even give them any swag, but the companies were so grateful that they paid them. He wrote, "We are white hats, but we're still not willing to work for free. This vulnerability was very critical. Our skills are rare, complex, and sought after. We think they deserve to be valued." So while Akamai was patching following our report, but not paying for it, we chose to race against time by asking for bounties from single Akamai customers and actually worked out well for them. Uh, so, you know, they got $25,000 from PayPal, $14,000 from Airbnb, 4000 from Hyatt Hotels. Steam only gave them 750 bucks. <laughs> Cheapskates. So Meta only $400. But I love this one. Goldman Sachs. Sent him a Franklin, a hundred dollar bill. That's it. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, because Goldman and Sachs I... is short on cash at the moment. So. Oh goodness, cheapskates. <laughs> Still, they, that... you know, they got the, they got about fifty thousand. They were, they were happy with that. But that just shows you, you know, you, uh, you know, I think uh, people like that who are responsible, uh, white hat hackers, you gotta give them a bug bounty. Apple for years did not. And then they realized that, oh, they're bad guys are just selling this to, to uh, yeah. the Israeli company. Uh, and, you know, what was the name of the Israeli company? NSO Group. Yeah, I forgot the name because they have uh, they, they disbanded and started a new company. Uh, kind of. They're in the yeah, middle of the uh, name. Of a, but, I mean, but, but this is exactly the problem. I mean, there are companies who think that giving a T-shirt is... And and exposure is it a good response nope. to a, you know someone finding a serious nope. bug? And it's like, yeah, oh does gosh, that teacher pay my mortgage? Then to hell with mm -hmm. you. Have you ever thought about you know, that? You pay developers. Have you ever thought about that when doing uh, doing that kind of uh, security work? No, it is really not my forte, and it's it's very stressful. It's hard. Um, it, yeah. It's really really hard. I took yeah. a crypto class and and security class in grad school, and I, I knew enough to know that I do not know 
enough about security to make a good living of it. Um, so no, you just look at uh, things like row hammer, uh, fuzzing attacks and stuff. And these are really like the edge of computing. I mean, really uh, interesting, talented people doing this work. And so, yeah, yeah, they Excellent. deserve to get, if they're going to do oh, yeah. the work, they deserve to get some more than a hundred dollars from Goldman Sachs. And I was going to ask Ben, is this, a, when it comes to sort of new businesses and the rest of it and getting finances, are companies willing to actually pay for this stuff or is it just seen as the standard security budget, which is you're a cost drain on us and, you know, it seems companies have a, they're taking security very much end of life rather than right at the start. It depends founder to founder. I will say our co-founder CTO is very serious about it and uh, made sure that there was a lot of like, there was a lot of additional security measures, but even then, you know, like a smaller company can only invest so much when they have to do a lot of other things. It just, it sort of depends and it depends a lot on the industry you're in. Like if you are in FinTech, you have to have that security because mm -hmm. a breach early mm -hmm. on could kill your business. So just like everything else, it's fine. It's incentivized based off of like the financial incentivizations of the business. But having an attack for certain businesses will kill you. And for others, it won't. And that kind of like, like if you get hacked at your an e-commerce business that sells candles, like you're not going to no. invest in that in the same way <laughs> right. as a security crypto company yeah. or something. Yeah. A yeah. Cryptography company. If you're not, if you're Binance, I would hope that you're putting a lot of money into your Red teams. Not and enough. Teams and uh, I was thinking, not enough. <laughs> yes, nowhere near enough. <laughs> not enough. Hey, let's take a quick break before we wrap up. I am so glad to have you guys here. Ben Parr, haven't seen you in a few years. You've been very busy, not only with your startup, Octane AI, but with a brand new show. Tell me about Business Envy. So uh, I partnered with my friend Greg Grunberg, who you may recognize from the TV show Heroes or Alias or Felicity or Star Wars. He's a nerd. Uh, fan, nerds love him. Fan Fanboys of. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, I have. I have seen and heard yeah, so yeah. him and I tried to start a business together 10 years ago. Um, so the context, like we tried to start a business 10 years ago, we failed at it, uh, but we wanted us try again. Uh, but this time we're going to get advice from the top people in business oh. in Hollywood so that we don't screw it up. So you're still going to so do the business, but you're going to do it in a podcast. Yes. We're literally building a business through the podcast oh, and we're getting clever. advice from our friends and episodes drop on Mondays at I think 6 a.m. Eastern. Our first episode was my mentor, Mark Ackler, who was one of the first early employees at Apple, was the SVP at Redbox. We have some amazing people coming on the show in the coming weeks. Top VCs, a couple of Hollywood celebrities who built base, amazing businesses, people who've sold their companies. The person coming on, I think tomorrow, sold his business for $200 million. So super interesting people, but we're getting lessons from them. And then we're using that hopefully as a way for everyone else to learn like actual actionable advice for like, how do you sell your company? How do you start a company? How do you ideate? And we'll go through things like, oh, we got to figure out email marketing. Let's go get an expert. We got to go figure out uh, PR. We got to go get an expert. Like the actual act of building a business as a mechanism to learn stuff. And Greg and I have known each other for forever. So we just have this dynamic that you just have to listen to. You just got to go listen to that trailer. I can't wait. Yeah. Listen to that first episode, everyone. Please subscribe. I will. I will. Businessenvyshow.com or just search for Business Envy wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, this sounds like a really good idea for a show. I, I want to listen to it. Thank you, Ben. Great to have you. Ian Thompson Thank also you. here from The Register. Uh, and Absolutely. Yeah, great to have you. TheRegister.com. And, uh, of course, Win comes to us from All About Android. We're very glad to have you here today. Win to Dow, whose name I am, of course, mispronouncing. But I'm doing the best I can. It's just fine. Just fine. <laughs> Our show today brought to you, talk about security, perfect timing, brought to you by SecureWorks. SecureWorks is a lead. These are the people you want on your team. They're a leader in cybersecurity, building solutions for security experts by security experts. SecureWorks offers superior threat detection and rapid incident response, all while making sure customers are never locked into a single Vendor. You know, this month, October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So let's raise some awareness about digital security and empower everyone to protect their data from cybercrime. SecureWorks has the perfect solution. It's, the, it's called Tages XDR. Now's the time to get it. 
It's not, it's not, cyber crime's not going away. In 2022, it's estimated cyber crime will cost the world $7 trillion with a T. By 2025, that figure, it's going to be $10.5 trillion. Last year, ransomware totaled $20 billion in damages that we know of. Attacks occurred every 11 seconds. 10 years out, 2031, ransomware is projected to cost 10 times more, $265 billion a year, and strike every two seconds. Make sure your organization is not the next victim with SecureWorks Tagus XDR. SecureWorks Tagus provides superior detection every single day, identifying more than 470 billion security events every day. And then sorting through it to prioritize the true positive alerts, eliminate alert noise, allowing organizations to focus on the real threat. In addition, Tejas offers unmatched response, automated response actions to eliminate threats before the damage is even done. With SecureWorks Tejas Managed XDR, you can easily leverage SecureWorks experts to investigate and respond to threats on your behalf so you can cut dwell times, decrease operational burden, and reduce cost. And with 24 7 by 365 coverage, whether you experience an outage on Christmas Day or half your team is out sick, you can trust that SecureWorks is there behind you. And of course, now many companies facing a shortage of security talent. SecureWorks acts as an extension of your security team on day one, alleviating cybersecurity talent gaps. It allows you to customize the approach and the coverage level. That you need. And, and you know what? If if this is important, write this down. If you've already found an intruder in your system, don't freak out. I want you to write down this number, 1 800 breached. 1 800 breached. That number will connect you with the SecureWorks Emergency Incident Response Team. You've got the experts on your side. They can provide you with immediate assistance any time of the day or night, 24 7, responding to and remediating a possible cyber incident or data breach. You're not alone. At SecureWorks, you can learn more about the ways today's threat environment is evolving and the risks it can present to your organization, including case studies, reports from their famous counter-threat unit, and more. Visit secureworks.com slash twit. Get a free trial of Tages XDR. Uh, you need it more than ever. Secureworks.com slash twit. SecureWorks, defending every corner of cyberspace, and we thank them so much for their support for our show this week in tech, secureworks.com slash twit. We had a great week this week on Twit, and I made a little movie. Well, somebody did. Just so you won't miss any of it. Watch. Uh, Barbara is next on the line from Glendale, California. Hello, Barbara. Oh. What a surprise! I got through. Oh, it's a miracle! Hey, it's a miracle. We uh, we do everything we can to keep people from calling, and they still do anyway. <laughs> Somehow, I don't know how it happens. Previously on Twit, Twit News. Welcome to Made by Google 2022. I like Rick a lot. It's, it's great to be back in a room with y'all. Well, the only surprise of the event, even and it was even rumored, a stand for the Pixel tablet a lot more details on the pixel tablet yeah. too in fact i'm already seeing people on twitter saying i don't really care about tablets but the idea of a nest hub plus that turns into a tablet is a pretty good idea and i think we agree on that hands-on photography and today i'm going to focus more on a particular tool that i rely on quite heavily the tool is scopes yeah scopes inside of your video editor of choice this week in google elon says he's going to use twitter to build an everything app called x buying twitter is an accelerant using that space language to creating x the everything app the turning Twitter into an everything app. I think that's a really great idea. The challenge is it is difficult in a way that Elon can't engineer around it. If even if he's able to do that, he's not going to be able to do that for years. And mm. there's not really a good way to do it quickly. If you missed Twit this week, you missed a lot. And I hope you won't miss any of it. And of course, if you're a Club Twit member, you can watch it all ad free. A little plug for Club Twit because it makes us makes it makes it possible for us to do so much more 
Uh, for instance, that interview we did last week with Corey Doctorow, Rebecca Giblin about his new book, Choke Point Capitalism. New shows we've launched like This Week in Space coming out of the club. And there's shows in the club uh, that aren't yet public but are really great, like Micah Sargent's Hands on Macintosh, Paul Therott does Hands on Windows, Jonathan Bennett's Untitled Linux Show, Stacey Higginbotham's Book Club, The Giz Fizz with Dick T. Bartolo. Plus, of course, you get access to our Discord, which is really a great place to hang out. It's a real social network. And the Twit Plus feed with material that just doesn't show up anywhere else. All the shows ad-free. All of that. $7 a month. Man, we're not charging enough. It's really a good deal, I think. And I want you to be in the club. Please go to twit.tv slash club twit and join us. We would love to have you. And thanks to all of our club twit members who make uh, a lot of what we do possible. Keep the lights on. And I think it's going to get harder and harder, to be honest, to keep the lights on as we head into a recession. Advertisers getting very, very skittish. A lot of people sent me a link to... Uh, a video from the Lincoln Project saying, don't use TikTok. It's owned by the Chinese government. Watch out. But Ben, you sound like a TikTok fan. Are you worried about who owns TikTok? Uh, yes, but this is the, this is the like trade-off. It is a great app. It is entertaining. It is how I think of things in terms of like the Gen Z does not really care that much that it is uh, has affiliations to the Chinese government uh, and whatever security measures they say there are don't really exist. Uh, so you have to figure out how to like work around that. I mean, I guess you can also straight up ban it, but I don't know what the consequences of that would be. Uh, so yeah, I don't expect that anyone's going to be banning it. The closest it could have been banned was last administration and they did not do it. Yeah. So it's not going to happen. I'm a fan of TikTok. I, I really think there's great content on there and uh, I'm not sure exactly how the Chinese government could use it to co-opt us. Uh, it's not the information they get. Right. Even the White House likes TikTok. They are bringing TikTok stars in for messaging. Remember the Saturday Night Live skit uh, when they brought in uh, influencers to meet with the president uh, to talk about the Ukraine situation? They just did it again for the infrastructure. I'm sorry, the Inflation Reduction Act, which actually was the Infrastructure Act, uh, last month. To mark the passage, uh, 20 influencers, content creators with devoted followings on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube came to the White House, met with the president. There he is posing with all these attractive young people in the Roosevelt briefing room <laughs> uh, to learn. Not a single T-shirt there. That is not realistic. That's, they're <laughs> these are mm. faux They knew they could not bring it on. Yeah. I recognize a couple of these. <laughs> really? They're news tick. They're, they're, yeah, there's like... Uh, one who does stuff for the L.A. Times that's uh, under the desk news is there. And there's a couple others I noticed. So you've been, I mean, you if say really people search on TikTok, I, do they really get their news from TikTok? I mean. Yes. Yes, they yeah, do. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, you know, oh. you go. No, go on. I, I was going to say, if uh, Biden really wants to get the message out, he should hire the Try Guys to uh, spread the word for him. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> I was, hit every meme this episode. There was a very funny <laughs> skit on Saturday Night Live about the Try Guys. Um, and uh, apparently one of the Try Guys was caught making out with the, uh, what what they call them, the, the food babies? And food baby, yes. <laughs> Support that food babies. And, uh, I have never felt so old. <laughs> mm. And uh, so they had to fire Nick, or Ned, Ned Fulmer. Uh, so uh, anyway, I don't know. Um, no, they, they had to fire him because it was him uh, being in a relationship with a subordinate. That's that's the key thing. And that's what broke the internet. That and like he is known as the the wife guy. That was his the entire wife guy, yeah. stick. Yeah. Like, like, look, this is actually like going back to like creators are bigger celebrities to Gen Z uh, and millennials in some ways, too, than actual current celebrities. And we just had to know, like, this is why people like a lot of people 50 years ago wanted to be celebrities and actors. You know, now they want to be uh, influencers because those are the celebrities. People cared a lot more about what was happening with the Try Guys than they did with Adam Levine. I just want to show yeah. you show you this. <laughs> Uh, this is the uh, Try Guys Saturday oh Night goodness. Live version Excellent. 
of yeah, the cool. actual, oops, I clicked the wrong button, of the actual uh, Try Guys uh, sit Date down and conversation. It looks, Excellent. It looks pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty especially, close. Especially Bowen. Bowen looks extremely Bowen close. Bowen is, a, yes, Bowen nailed it. Bowen always I would it. love to play you this Saturday Night Live video, but I know that it would immediately take me down. But uh, it's the new season for SNL. And you know what? It, it was a little hit and miss, but that one. If you were following the Try Guys drama, well, that one, that one, the internet's reaction was interesting because if they, you were, in, if you're into the Try Guys, uh, people didn't like it because it uh, kind of understated the like issues of like uh, dating a subordinate. And if you are not at all know anything about the Try Guys, then it hit home because everyone's talking about this thing that you know doesn't matter compared to things like. Uh, the upcoming elections or Ukraine should, or things like that. Should the White House hire Ned Fulmer uh, to give them insight <laughs> into uh, influencers? I think that's the kind of thing you fall up, you no, fail no, upwards into a government job, don't you? The, no, you 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 go and uh, sell crypto to uh, <laughs> or <that>. people <laughs> on the right stuff. <laughs> he'll be he'll be on Shark Tank. Any any? He'll be on the right stuff. The you right know? stuff. <laughs> There's layers to that, man. There's just so many layers to that. That's like that. That is an I, internet burrito. Like oh, burrito of the week. Thank you, Ben Park, oh. for the internet burrito of the week. Congratulations. I don't know what any of you are talking about. Bruce Willis wants you to know that uh, no, he did not give up the rights to uh, a deep fake company called Deep Cake. <laughs> Well, he did and he didn't. I mean, basically, he's given up some imaging rights. They made a commercial with yeah, his exactly. face in it. Yeah. But, I mean, honestly, Bruce Willis, his acting range is kind of limited. I'm pretty well, sure they could do it. He has aphasia now, so he can't act. Yeah, no, he's that's retired because yeah. he can't remember lines. Um, and so, I don't know. I It seems like that's a good idea. There was a commercial for a Russian carrier a cell carrier called Megaphon. That's not really Bruce Willis there. That's a deep fake of Bruce Willis tied also, up. Also, advertising for the Russians is not a great career move at the moment. <laughs> it was you a know, fake. Call he me didn't Mr. do Picky. it. <laughs> yeah, but he sold it. But call me Mr. Picky, but when you're invading, you know. Yeah, this was a couple of years countries. ago. This wasn't recently. Um, it is, you know, it's a, that's a real actor. Uh, that's a fake Bruce Willis. And I think it's pretty close. I mean, that's a pretty close. Yeah. I mean, look, yeah. the deepfakes are yeah. like, you cannot tell much of the difference. And it's being employed in like the Star Wars universe with like right. the Darth Vader mm -hmm. voice, which is incredible that they like, got, uh, know, they got, uh, James uh, Earl I mean, James not Earl just Jones the Darth Vader voice, but yeah. I mean, Rogue One, when Admiral, Rogue One, yeah. when, when Tarkin, it, uh, the, uh, Tarkin Admiral yeah. Tarkin, but also what really got me was when, you know, Princess Leia turned around and said, A New Hope, and it's just like, that feels really wrong. You know, I want Carrie Fisher back again. I do not want a, you know, an artificial version. I think of it was, it. they were creepy. I mean, and they weren't very good, yeah. but I think that uh, in time, if but you, they're getting better. Yeah. Like if the I, new if I were Skywalker. a fake oh, right now, you wouldn't think it was five creepy. years down the line. They're going to be so good. To, I retired in, five years ago. All of us. People have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> all of us are just actually deep fakes yeah. having conversations. AI is just generated the conversations Honestly, every week. Twit 2020 reading drive C. Twit 2029 probably will be just you know all of us digitized. We'll be out on the beach sitting around a fake table. John, though, you have to be real because somebody's got to push the push buttons. YouTube, Bernita. If, if no, we're not going to be sitting around me. digitized on the beach. We're going to be in a poorhouse while the people <laughs> that do the actual work. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's what. I will sell my digital rights for a stupid amount of money. So if anyone wants to buy my digital rights, you can have a conversation with me. There you go. And then I will go sit on a beach. Uh, and I may regret that. It depends on how much you give me. This is one of those parent Pandora's boxes that I keep talking about. Like, not like, like this kind of seems like, a, like an okay idea, especially in the case of Bruce Willis with aphasia, allowing him to kind of do his job yeah. without being able Make to do his money. job. Yeah. But it's really creepy, y'all. I mean, like, damn right. Like, like yep. especially with the estate. Like, imagine like the estate, like, I don't know, uh, pick, I mean, like, even like, oh, I'm sorry, who, the actor who played uh, Grandma Tarkin is, I'm, oh, Peter, uh, like, uh, Christopher, Peter. Cr Oh, oh no, was. Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's kind of hard because you know rights of the 
uh, like, you know, the I, I, like IP of your own face. Like, there's so many really interesting. Yeah. Like, Bob issues. Dylan sold the rights to his music catalog for something like $60 million because he's old and he wanted to leave something for his family. Hey, and Bruce Springsteen got Bruce nearly half a billion yeah. for his music I don't, catalog. I think that's okay. Rights. I mean, there is a difference between selling the rights to your music and selling your likeness. But, you know, if it, it helps, you know, take care of your family when you're gone, I, all I'm saying but is I music, will be glad to do that. But your music is a completed art. That's not going to be changed. That's yes. not future. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, yeah. Selling your digital rights. That's selling you know, your past, not your future. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to, they're going to, they could put you in any situation and you're mm -hmm. not going to think of every situation, whatever contract you come up with. Right. It is very different. You might different. be selling uh, cell phones for Russia. Which, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, this is we've found this out. Um, in the we're currently in uh political party conference season in the UK, and Liz Truss, who is um, yeah, okay, our new prime minister elected by 0.1 percent of the population, but she came onto her stage, uh, to the sound of M Peoples moving them up from the oh, mid 90s. Lord. Oh, Lord, but oh. M People had sold their music rights off, and oh. while they said, you know. Um, you know, we can't, you know, we hate her and everything she stands for, you know, they couldn't stop it. Um, also, all credit to Bobby Gillespie from, from Primal Screen for saying, yeah, okay, we heard she come onto a 90s track and it wasn't ours. But once you sell the stuff, you've lost right, rights yeah, to it. Yeah, and yeah. the same's going to happen to your face and to your thoughts and the rest of it. If you're lucky, I'd be happy to. I'm just saying, give me the cash now and you can have my likeness later. All right. uh, Lisa might have something to say about that. Yeah, she's the one who's going to sell it. What are you talking about? I could totally, four, I could totally see her shopping my my likeness. Just imagine four Leo Lapores. There's a Leo so Lapore robot. We'll do sitting. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. We'll do the whole thing. Hey, Wynn, Thank you so much. I hope it was fun for you to be here. I hope you'll come back. Oh, blast. Win to doubt. You see her every Tuesday on All About Android. She's a lead developer at Adobe. No, you have to stick your tongue out when you do that. Queen Code Monkey. That's it. Nice. And she's an influencer. <laughs> she's the whole internet oh, gosh, burrito. No, please, no. No? Oh, no. <laughs> Too late. No. Influencer. No. <laughs> no influencing around here, please. Okay, no. but we are going to use that image as the thumbnail, so I'm sorry. You're, you're stuck. All right, your sorry. rights. That's you've, all right. you've signed over I, all I, your I rights. I signed away my digital rights. <laughs> anyway, really a pleasure. You're great. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being thank here. Thank you so much, Leo. This I, is I fantastic. I really appreciate it. Same to you, Ian Thompson. Any? We've been plugging for everybody else. What do you want to plug? Anything? Um, oh, well, I mean, the reg carries on. We've done it for 25 years, and you know, we punch well above, above our weight. But in terms of plugging stuff, I would like to say an ex-reg journo who left us last year is now a director on Nominet because he ran a number of serious articles pointing out how they were trying to turn a domain, a non-profit domain, into a profit center for private equity. He exposed that. He's now been elected by the members. That so, is you know, fantastic. Ooh, yeah, that, that, is, that was Nominet is the UK registrar, should, right? The big UK yeah, registrar. It, it runs the .co.uk domain, and I, it was one of those stories which really warmed the cockles of my heart because everyone says journalism doesn't do anything anymore and the rest of it. Kieran spent four years researching this stuff, this move from the domain used to run .co.uk as a a nonprofit, and any excess profits went to charity. Then a new bunch of people took over. They wanted to make it to a profit center. They set up a private equity firm to buy it. They stopped doing charitable donations. He reported on all of this. Sadly, we lost him because he wanted to move back to the UK. But he's now he was elected by the members. And now we're going to get some serious oversight. But this is something that domain holders really need to watch out for because private equity is moving into the sphere in a big way Ugh. because these are these are basically established industries if you're running a .org uh, for example or a .co.uk or a specialized URL you are tied into that you've been into it for 10 15 years and when a company takes us over and says right we're going to char charge you 5% more each year for for what it's running a domain it's easy so just watch out for this if you're running a domain and your domain is getting taken over vote get involved get sorted 
awesome. As you Sorry, write, that's my as you write. No, I love it. As you write on the register, Kieran McCarthy, former registered journalist, is here to chew bubble gum and kick nominate ass, and he's all out of bubble gum. So <laughs> I would not like to go up against Kieran. He's he's one of my oldest friends in the U.S. and now he's moved back to the U.K. But do not go up against this guy because he will get, you will go down with his teeth in your throat. That is really great. Congratulations, Kieran. That's really good news. Is he is he leaving the register to do this, or is he going to? Yeah, he he left the register because um, he got sick of Bay Area schools and the healthcare system. So <laughs> he wanted to go home. <laughs> well, honestly, I love being over here, but you make you're it a really citizen difficult now. sometimes. Yeah. Not quite. No, I haven't taken that leap. I have learned an awful lot more about the U.S. Constitution than I ever knew, which is why the first or, or than any other American native knows. I might add. Well, seriously, I've asked a bunch of Americans how many members are in Congress, and no one knows. <laughs> you know, five hundred thirty-eight. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's a mad. It's, it's a mad. One hundred senators, five hundred thirty-eight representatives. No, no, four hundred thirty-eight. Four hundred thirty-eight. Four hundred thirty-five. Four hundred thirty-five, surely. Four hundred thirty-five, and then three from DC. Three from DC. The oh, the five thirty-eight. Yeah, I forgot those. It's five thirty-eight because you get a hundred from because senators. you get five thirty-eight electors, and yeah. you get three additional. Anyway, yeah. it's I studied, electors. I did study political science. Very good. This, nice. This, <laughs> nice. Brilliant. Very good. good it's one of my favorite Simpsons scenes is when a poo goes for citizenship, and there's like. What was the cause of the civil wars? Actually, the causes were many and multiple. Of not <laughs> leaving aside the slavery thing, there was just just say slavery. Yes, slavery. Okay, which way to the <laughs> welfare office? One word <laughs> answer. Hey, thank you, Ian. Such a pleasure. Always come up. Always we'll have a, a bacon pleasure. buddy to thank sometime you. together, and it'll be a, a lot of fun. I appreciate. It. We'll have you watched on HBO? Have you watched the show Industry yet? No, must watch. No, I haven't even heard of it. In fact. Oh, it's a British show. Uh, about uh, a financial services company called Pierpoint, somewhat like Salt Goldman Sachs. It is ah. really engaging, especially Industry. the second season. Industry, right? Okay, that's Industry. going on my two. It takes list. a little while because, but it, but it, but by the second season, you're like, I oh wow, this is a great show. Just wanted to mention that because you always Thank give you me very good much shows. indeed. Yes. Oh, and by the way, since we're recommending. Uh, shows and I know that it always amuses you when I go about this. Is Derry Girls is now on a third season? Seriously, watch it. D e r r y. I thought it was D a i r y, and I couldn't figure it no, out. No, no. D e r y. They're and from Derry, it's... Ireland. Derry yeah. Girls. They're sweet. They're su so good, and I can't oh, wait to watch it's the show. Such a good series. Season three, <laughs> Derry Girls. A love letter to Derry Girls. Thank you. Uh, thank you also, Ben Parr. Hey, it's really great to see you again. We had dinner uh, a few months ago. Uh, it was really great to see you and uh, your girl, your woman, whatever. I don't know. What do you call people these days? You're, uh, you're a friend. Who, you're, you're a soulmate. You're, oh, there you go. I like that cute. one. We had a lovely dinner, and I said, Ben, the minute your new podcast comes out, uh, businessenvyshow.com, you've got to be on the show. And lo and behold, here he is. But it won't be the last time. Come back soon. Appreciate I it. I cannot wait. That's great. Thanks to all of you for joining us. We do Twit Sundays, 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern, 21.30 UTC. You can watch us do it live. If you're really in a hurry, you can watch the live version at live.twit.tv. Watching live, you should chat live at irc.twit.tv or in the Club Twit Discord. Now with animated GIFs, uh, which are a lot of fun. Uh, you can also uh, get shows after the fact. All the shows we uh, we do are available on the website, twit.tv, ad-supported, uh, or on the YouTube channel. There is a dedicated channel for most of our shows, including This Week in Tech. Or uh, subscribe in your favorite podcast client, and that way you'll get it automatically just in time for your Monday morning commute. And if your podcast app allows for reviews, please leave us a five-star. Let the world know about what is now, I think, without a doubt, the longest running technology podcast in the world yes kids there were podcasts back in 2005 that's that's when we started we've been doing it ever since have a great night thanks for joining us we'll see you next time another twit this is the can. Amazing. Bye -bye.